All right, all right. Peace, 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 family. Uh, you're tuning into Pro Black Perspective on KWZ Radio. Uh, today we're going to do something pretty excited. Um, first off, we're going to be talking on a Friday night. Um, that means for everybody who's not going out, um, good for you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, you get to you get to chill right here. Um, we're going to look into this document that you can download from the FBI. Okay, you can go to the FBI's website. And we're going to investigate the big question, which is really not a question. Um, is the Black Messiah of FBI document real? What does it really say? And we're going to give a live in-depth uh, analysis. We got EL in the building. Shout out to EL. Um, and so we're just going to give a live, a live, a live presentation about it. Um, why? Because it's actually pretty juicy. This document is pretty juicy stuff. We're really going to focus on page 67. But there's some pretty juicy stuff in here. Um, so I might, you know, scroll through uh, just before everybody comes in. And, you know, we're only expecting three people, right? We got one already. Shout out to EL. <laughs> but even so, uh, you know, just to get it started. But anyway, but, but before we get started, really, let's talk about how we're part of a podcast and network called KWAZ Radio. Hello there, dear listener. We hope you're enjoying this lovely discussion. If you're not already aware, this show is part of a podcast network called KWAZ Radio, a Pan-African nationalist and Garveyite network come to showcasing the rich and varied thoughts of African people. We have an exciting lineup of shows that we think you'll enjoy, including the Peter Metzen Podcast. I think black people require too much buy-in. Like, we, we constantly have to sell black people on things that are beneficial to black people. The Pro-Black Perspective Podcast. I'm fearful that our people are not really studying how to get ahead, you know? And we're kind of, you know, continually staying behind. The Harsh Reality Podcast. To me, it don't, it don't matter. I think people are so dumbed down. It wouldn't matter what you reveal to them. They still are in the matrix. They're in the simulation. They're going to keep doing what they did. They're lemmings. So it to me, it don't matter. Man. The Learning Curve Podcast. Sexual access has never given you economic empowerment. The only person who has ever been economically empowered by a sexual relationship is the wasp and his woman. The Cathedral Cheek Show. When we start rising up to fight for our own, I guarantee you they'll stop doing what they're doing. I guarantee you they would have let their brother go. They they was waiting to see what black folks was going to do. Brother Bakari Podcast. Black people love to claim folks that don't, that hate them, right? But they're a slave master, and they are ashamed of who they really are. The Forecast Radio. Like, if you pray to the same deity as, like, your enemy, and they, that God blesses your, en- your enemy more than you, you may want to reconsider who you're praying to, you know? And Tanzan, African mind. Because generally, um, a welcoming of everyone, sometimes to my consternation, I think that they should be less, you know, welcoming. If you love our podcast network, we would be grateful if you could rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. Follow us on social media, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and check out our website at www.kwazradio.com for more information. Thank you for tuning in. And now, back to the program. All right, all right. So, I actually set up my station so I could stand up on this presentation. Check this out, though, fam. Guess what? You can join the conversation whenever you want. I clicked the, I put the link up there so we can have a wider discussion. There's not really much to... I don't like how this, this document is, like, slowly loading. So, the main page we want to go to is page 67. So, we're just going to scroll through, see if we notice anything. Because I was really, really interested in this kind of stuff. Um, because what the FBI does in releasing this document is they tell us what kind of, uh, at least a handful of their strategies or a handful of their motivations 
Um, their motivations are pretty obvious. Uh, they do not want a Mau Mau revolution <laughs> in America. They don't want you being violent um, against them. And so the whole, the whole idea is really to stop militancy. You know, and that's the thing that we have to realize or recognize is that, honestly, this white boy does not mind. Like, as long as you're not Nat Turner, he doesn't care what you do. Um, as long as you don't fuck up his paper, he don't care. You know, I think it was Ida B. Wells who said, uh, no, actually, I know it was Ida B. Wells, but um, Ida B. Wells said, uh, the white man's dollar is his God. And if, if and I can't remember actually the full quote, but something along the lines of, if you really want to disrupt them, you don't mess with his money. Fuck with his paper. Um, that said, we're going we're gonna to look into, uh, and this white boy says the same thing. You know, he says the same thing. He says, don't mess with my paper. And this is why, you know, some of you might be like, why are you talking about this? So you can get in trouble. No, because I, I don't fuck with white boy's paper. I, I, you might not notice it, but I, I don't. Like, this white boy don't want you talking about violence, and he don't want you fucking with his paper. And the thing is this, I'm not even into, like, I, my thing is I just want to leave. You know? And, and, and so if you just want to leave, that's, this is what Garvey says too. Garvey's like, yo, if you just want to leave, man, like, like, you're good. You're good. And some people might say, and the reason what inspired me to, to, to do this podcast was, Something along the lines of, I don't know, we're just scrolling through. You guys can read it slowly or whatever. What inspired me is the, is the reality of this, that this white boy makes a list of the top five threats, top five African-American threats, right? Um, and the, the threats, he kills three of them. He kills three of them, says the other guy's too old, and then he... Uh, uh, and then the other one, the foreigner, you know, runs to Africa. And, and my thinking is the foreigner, the, you know, Stor you know uh, Kwame Ture, right, was a smart one. No disrespect to the other ones. But he was a smart one. Because if you see how, how deeply ingrained this white boy was in these organizations, it didn't even make any damn sense what you were trying to do. You were trying to do a Mau Mau revolution in front of his face. Come on. El says to see your enemy and know him is a part of a complete education of man. Yep. I tell you, I, I, I tell you guys. By the way, so one of the reasons why I'm 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 doing this podcast tonight is because it's Friday night, um, and usually on a Friday night you might be like, yo, you know what? Let me go out and try to talk to some women. You know, usually it's not too successful. Um, two weeks ago it was pretty damn successful. Talked to two baddies, two nice looking women. I'm telling you the truth. Uh. Got their numbers, right? Hold on a second. Somebody joined. <laughs> uh, I got their numbers, right? Uh, oh, sorry. No, it said uh, they were asking me if it's, if I was uh, if I was still in the room. I got their numbers, you know. But then it, it just dawned on me, like, what, 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 like, what am I gonna do with these baddies? I'm a, I'm a damn intellectual, you know. I, I, I need to, 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 to wife up a woman. Real talk. That's what I need to do. You know, I mean, sure, I could, I could tumble with the best of them. You know, I could prove to, to prove to everybody, hey, look, I'm, I got the, you know. But like, the baddies in America ain't even like the baddies in Africa. So it's just kind of like, okay, you know, you, you, you put in a lot of work for, you know, eh, you know. So this is about the Ku Klux Klan. I'm, I'm trying to figure out. It's supposed to get interesting at some point. The population of two hundred ten. Million, uh, 210,000, including 40,000 Negroes, you know, and they're talking about the Klan. John Davis, they got the people. Uh, now, there was this part, the reason why I'm scrolling through is because there's this part where they talk about how deep they got into uh, the Nation of Islam. So, I think this is right here counterintelligence, black nationalist hate groups. Um, prior to the instructions of the program, blah, blah, blah. So, this is not it, though, but still. At some point, they even tell you how much money these, uh, like how how the how the nation of Islam scam works, um, and and that's really something that's pretty interesting. The way how they 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 got these black men to put out some money, I'm telling you, I, I almost feel like shit. You know what I'm saying? Like you leave the blueprint. You know what I'm saying? 
<laughs> you know, I'm not I'm not hurting for cash, but you know, shit. I'm telling you, man, they had these mother, they had these people buying the newspapers for twenty four dollars. Okay, uh, twenty four dollars, one hundred fifty copies, selling them for twenty cents each, making thirty bucks back, right? And so they they can get the six bucks for that. But on top of that, they already paid. What's it say? We should develop a complete facts regarding the alleged prostitution ring to determine the federal or local prosecution is feasible to exploit the situation to the fullest by some of the former. Okay, so let's see what that is about. So they're saying they're saying something about a prostitution ring somewhere. One of these black. Oh, Nation of Islam, obviously. The bureau. I can't even read this. Bureau feels that this incident affords an excellent opportunity. Oh, feels. Exploit the situation by counterintelligence. Let's see what the first sentence is. Okay, something about Nation of Islam. Uh, by counterintelligence action that will discredit and disrupt the NOI and in Dallas possibly completely neutralize the NOI in Dallas. Accordingly, you should immediately conduct all logical investigation to verify and determine the complete details surrounding these allegations. Your investigation should be coordinated with your white slave traffic, um, white slave traffic act intensification program to determine if any federal violations exist. Results of your um, investigation as to the NOI should be submitted under the NOI captured in letterhead, blah, blah. By the same date, we should submit under this kind of... All right, so they don't really say much. It's just like, yo, I think we got something. Um, we think that they have a, a prostitution ring in Dallas, which is not surprising, you know? Uh, like, you know, what we know, like, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. You know what I mean? It's just not surprising. Like, if you know how silly motherfuckers are these days... Like, they were, I mean, let's just say they were as silly. You know, they probably been, some of them more silly, some of them less silly. But let's just say they were as silly. You know, human human greed and human stupidity do not stop. Like, they didn't start recently. Uh, they're, they're, they're an item. Let's see what the comments are like, though. I'm scrolling through this thing, and I don't see the, I don't see the documents I was trying to look for. Okay, we just got, um, we ain't got no documents, but it's okay. Let's see, in so much as blah, blah, blah. I know most people are out there drinking. And my thing is that I don't even, I don't even like drinking, you know? I don't even like drinking. I don't, I don't like, I don't like music that much like that, you know? It's a, it's a waste of my damn time. I really, what I need to do is I need to learn, read. This is, this is a part of that reading. So I did scroll to this earlier. I'm surprised that there's nothing, let's see. Appendix right here. So this is it right here. This is one of those things right here. So it says, look. So this is how, this is how penetrated these people were. All right? So on July 1st, 1960, sources advised that a Nation of Islam group had existed at Fort Worth, Texas. Since January 1957, a group had existed in Dallas and since September 1959. These sources advised on June 1st that since July 25th, 1960, right? So they advised in 62 that since 1960, the Islam believers of both Fort Worth and Dallas, Texas, have been meeting together as a merged group known as Muhammad's Temple of Islam in Dallas. All right. The purpose of the Muhammad's Temple of Islam in Dallas is to follow the teachings of Islam as handed down by Elijah Muhammad. Um, oh, no, that's not it. So they're just telling you, hey, look, we had agents in 1960, right? That's not the one, though. That's that's not the one. One of them is, is like, oh, we got him to, like, he didn't change his message, right? Is this it? Yeah, 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 so this is it right here. So in the past, so let's just read right here. So he says, look, let's talk about the issue of Islam. So in January, a source advised Elijah Muhammad. So a source advised Elijah Muhammad. So what that means is this. An agent made it all the way into, like this is an undercover. Made it all the way up to Elijah Muhammad's ear. Okay? So uh, a source advised Elijah Muhammad has described his organization on a nationwide basis as the Nation of Islam and Muhammad's Temple of Islam. On uh, fifth, a source advised Elijah Muhammad has, has described his. Okay, so that wasn't actually what I wanted to say. But a second source advised Elijah Muhammad is the. Oh, so, so all right, the source already penetrated, and they're telling they're telling the Nation of Islam. But let's see, natural leader of Islam, blah blah blah. The other, when referring to the Muhammad as a, as a nationwide basis, commenced Mosque Temple and Muhammad's Temple of Islam. So the NOI is an all-Negro organization, which was originally organized in 1930 in Detroit, Michigan. Muhammad claims to have been selected by Allah, the Supreme Being, to lead the so-called Negro race out of slavery in the wilderness of North America by establishing an independent black nation in the United States. Already, 
in one ear out the other. Members following Muhammad's teachings and his interpretations of the Quran believe, and they put in quotation marks, the Quran, believe that there is no such thing as a Negro. The so-called Negroes are slaves of the white race, referred to as the white devils in the United States. And the white race, because of its exploitation of the so-called Negroes, must and will be destroyed in the approaching war of Armageddon. Okay? So, you're on, you're on notice. In the past, officials and members of the NOI, including Mohammed, have refused to register under the provisions of the Selective Service Acts and have declared that members owe no allegiance to the United States, right? So that's, that's one notice. On May 5th, 1958, so look at this. The first source advised Mohammed had, upon a vice of legal counsel, tempered his personal statements and instructions to his ministers concerning the principles of the organization in order to avoid possible prosecution by the United States. However, he did not indicate any fundamental change in the teachings of his organization. So, so somebody came up to Elijah Muhammad and said, look, you got, you got to stop. You got to stop talking about, um, uh, like, you got to, you got to, uh, you know, the United States government can prosecute you, right? So this is right here. It says, a third source advised Muhammad had in early 1958 decided to de-emphasize the religious aspect of the teachings of Islam and to stress the economic benefits to be derived by those Negroes who joined the NOI. This policy change, according to Muhammad, would help him acquire additional followers and create more interest in his programs. Now, here's the thing about this, right? So, the, so, so, the, so again, we're not really focused on this part, but it's, it's juicy, you know? What he's going to, what the FBI is going to show is actually the inner workings of the, uh, of the, uh, of the thing. So this is the Muslim girls training. Nothing really here. Interesting, just that they learned um, history, right? They joined civilization class, which is, it is interesting, but it's not, um, it's not juicy. Like, you kind of probably already knew that. Um, what's interesting is how much people were being paid, and, and later on how the leadership was getting, you know, buco dollars, um, which is important because, you know, one, it's a, it, it tells you how to freaking make a scheme, obviously. Um... This is about Stokely Carmichael, um, United Front, Kwame Ture. Um, uh, and, and basically the, the, the meat and potato, the juice of this, I think it's really um, interesting. And like I said, I'm, I'm showing you guys the, uh, the primary source. I could obviously just talk about it, but I'm showing you the primary source um, just, for, just for primary source sake. Let's see, Brother Bakari is here. Brother Bakari, I got the link in the chat in case you wanted to jump up, you know? I said to myself, look, it's a Friday night. Um, I know Brother Bakari's going to say stuff. So um, let's see. In the past, blah, 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 segregation, segregation. Uh, Stokely Carmichael right here. Uh, and look at this. It is believed it would also be a deterrent for any activity which militant groups. Like, realistically, this white boy does not want militant groups. He does not want you to do Mau Mau. And he kind of says it. Um, he kind of says it later. Um but I just wanted to scroll through. What page are we on? Yeah, we're on page 44. Um, I kind of did want to see some of the stuff after that page, but let's see. Elijah Muhammad, respect to some so forth. And I'm just mad that this page doesn't load right away. Ensure your alertness, blah, 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 predilection. Uh, was not hired because of a below average scholastic records. Damn. Uh, covers Rhode Island. Exposing the NOI should be a particularly valuable at this station look at this a program exposing the noi should be particularly valuable at the station remember th these are white boys just writing each other just just having a chat about how to sabotage um black groups let's see uh title change to substitute racial intelligence for internal security blah blah, blah. for the information of detroit detroit where a large company plant is located they explained that one of the directors of the firm is blank in Detroit, was recently approached by a black power group in Detroit, headed by the black power group wanted blank and other businessmen to form a corporation to provide money or rebuilding ghetto areas in Detroit under the control of the black power group. The blank said that blank realizes this group is composed of extreme militants and is concerned that they may have a red Chinese orientation. The desired confirmation of this from the Bureau. The confidential nature of the Bureau was explained to that who said they understood the Bureau's position. This information is being furnished in Detroit in view of that fact and the possibility uh, Detroit should advise to the extent in which uh, his associates are known to be friendly towards Chinese communist philosophy and should submit recommendations for counterintelligence action. So that's actually pretty interesting. 
So what happens here is this. There's this, um, apparently there's this white boy, I'm guessing, right, um, who's approached by these black folk. <laughs> and he's told, the white boy is like, the white boy is told, hey, why don't you give us some money so we could run a company? And the white boy is like, yeah, sure. And he calls the FBI. <laughs> It says, they sound like a bunch of damn fucking communists. Like, look into that. Like, what the fuck? Like, that's what I'm saying, though. This is the this is the trouble, man. It's like, why do we... Like, we we want free. Like, we want we want free money. And we want free money with no strings attached. I, I had this post on uh, on Twitter. Some people don't want to like it. Some people... Like, like, matter of fact, nobody liked it, right? But the thing about it was this. You know, this woman was complaining. She was like, hey, you know, they gave us welfare. We didn't ask for it. You know, we didn't, we didn't create welfare. They gave it to us. And it's like, yeah, okay, you applied for welfare. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, you applied for welfare. Like, like, like it's, not like, it's not like they just gave it to you. And even if they did just give it to you, like, it's free money. Now, you might say, well, there's strings attached. It's like, yeah, there's strings attached. Like, like what, did, what would you... Why would you think that somebody would give you money with no strings attached? And I like, I mean, people love that shit. People love getting money for no. Because I said I, I was in Africa. Um, this this dude just writes me up. Hey man, I'm sleeping on the fucking streets, and 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 you know I, I got no food. I need to, I need just need a little bit of money for a job. So I sent him the money and I blocked his dumb ass. Cause I'm like ill, like ill. What are you begging me for money for? He then writes me on another phone number. Hey, thank you, man. You know, you're, you're not, I'm not even your parent. Like, I don't know what he meant by that. But I'm not even your parent, but you helped me. You know, you're such a good person. And I'm like, yeah, okay. You're a fucking dude. What do you want free, like, what do you want free money for? Like, I get if a woman was like, hey, I like you. You know, and she's bullshitting me, obviously. But she, she wants money. Get it. Guy, I don't get it. Because it's like, what do you, like, like, no. I'm not interested. Um... Like, no thanks. I mean, I send him the money anyway because it's like, um, I'm a good guy. But, um, honestly, I'm not, like, I'm not helping out motherfucking dudes. You know? I'm sorry. Uh, you're a damn, you're a grown ass man. You're a grown damn man. So let's keep looking. Um, but yeah, people like money. So it's like, one of the things that I was like, I was saying about that whole, uh, welfare thing was this. They're like this. We don't want you to have... A man in the house. We don't want you to have a black man in the house. But, like, you got to think about why they would say that. You know? If a black man is getting you pregnant, right? Let's say let's say you're getting money based off of how many children you have, right? If you have five kids, you're getting... Let's, like, let's just pretend. You have four kids, you're getting 400 bucks, right? You have five kids, you're getting 500 bucks. You have six kids, you're getting 600 bucks. Now, that's not... Obviously, it's not like that. It's probably not as direct. It's not that linear, obviously. Um, nevertheless, right, um, let's pretend it's that way, right? If I'm giving you money, let's say I'm giving you money based off of how big your family is and your family keeps growing, I'm giving you free fucking money and your family, like, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna keep doing it. Like, I'm gonna be like, hey, look, could you not get additional kids? Cause, 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 cause the whole purpose, I would say. Like, like, cause one thing is that you you should try to improve your life. That's one, right? You having more children is not improving your life. I mean, maybe it's improving your life if you look at it like, hey, I'm getting more money. That's fine. I'm not interested in that. I want to help. Like, like, and I'm not saying the government wants to help, but I'm just saying let's let's think about in a situation where, uh, like, like the best case scenario. Let's say there was a motherfucking, you know, a Democrat that believed his own bullshit, right? And the best case scenario. You're saying to yourself, yeah, I'll give more money to the person with more children. And then the person with more children gets more children. And more children. You know, the, the example of Claudine where she has six children from six different men, right? Or I don't know how many different men, but, you know, let's say she has six children from six different men, right? Why would you as a as a, as an agency want this woman to be dating men who are not providing for her? It's one thing if you're dating a man who's providing for you, because sure, I could take away my money and you could live happily ever after. But it's a whole other thing to be like, hey, why don't you give me money? I, I'll give you money so that this guy, you know, <laughs> could just get you pregnant again and leave like the other six guys. 
Come on. Anyway, uh, so I mean, like, I, I don't know. I, I'm just saying I don't get the whole, hey, man, I didn't create welfare, therefore. Like, I don't get it. Oh, yeah, you didn't, you didn't, you, so don't apply for it. You know? And it's like, well, yeah, well, I actually need the money. Exactly. And you need the money. And if you need the money, it's because the situation in the, like, the situation for black people globally is trash. And we have to focus on how we can get ahead. You know what I'm saying? We have to focus on how we get ahead. Not, you know, inventing problems like, I got free money, but I was told to cut back on, on, on having more kids. You know? <laughs> I, ain't got, I ain't got an economy functioning. Right, and I'm getting free money for it, but I gotta. But I was told to, you know. So I'm being fucking depressed. Like no, like no. There's 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 more to this, right? But anyway, let's uh, let's go into this thing right here. So this is actually pretty interesting. So he says the following information with regard to the nature of Islam is set forth for consideration by the bureau. So it is noted that the Nation of Islam requests twelve dollars weekly dues from each member in the NYC area. Each member is also requested to purchase hundred fifty copies of Muhammad Speaks newspaper per week. From the local mosque as a price at a price of twenty four dollars. If the member is able to sell all one hundred fifty copies at twenty cents each, he is able to net six dollars for himself. Thus, each participating NOI member must turn in approximately ninety six dollars in paper money, plus forty eight dollars per month in dues to mosque number seven, uh, New York City. I think that's actually Malcolm X's mosque. This represents a total of one hundred forty five dollars. From each member, with approximately 500 people in NOI contributing dues and paper money each week, the Mo the New York City Mosque is able to take in approximately 72 thousand fucking dollars a month, and this is not 72 thousand dollars a month from today's standing, which is still, uh, well, I mean, it's, it's it's pretty good for a for for a, for a mosque, although it's 500 people, so it's not that great, but it's still good, right? This is 72 thousand dollars in 1960s. She boy. Shit, these mother like they, they knew what they were doing. Okay, they knew what they, they knew what time it was. So <laughs> add to this the regular collections, which are taken up each Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday night, plus the Savior's Day collection for which each member is expected to contribute a hundred dollars. Shit. In addition, the restaurants, bazaars, and bakeries all contribute money to the mosque. Admittedly, a good portion of this money eventually finds its way to Elijah Muhammad in Chicago. However, it is felt that the leaders of the NOI mosque take care of themselves before any funds are sent to Muhammad. And here's where, here's where, here's where it gets kind of crazy. Because I said this is probably the mosque that Malcolm X was in, right? Malcolm X dies poor. You know, we talk about, we talk about exploitation and shit. Okay. You know, like look at look at your church, like that's your, that's your church exploitation. But all right, we go in. Um, uh, to have expressed hostility, is reported to have made the statement that he caught any spies in the NOI, he'll personally kill them. So somebody said they would kill whoever's a spy. Prior to the NOI affiliation, articulate speaker who constantly condemns Christians and Jews and speaks disrespectfully of the U.S. flag, he has stated that all white people are to be destroyed. Okay, so there's somebody, um, somebody who was a. Uh, a bad mamma jamma, but we don't know who it is because it's redacted. Another million dollars was to be raised outside New York City. Shit. These motherfuckers, they, they, were, they were moving bank. They were moving paper. And so later on, they're going to talk about, um, so it's felt that an effort should be made to, not this one right here, but enlighten the NY membership of how the, oh yeah, how well their leaders live on the hard-earned cash of the followers. It can be pointed out to the membership that they are being swindled by these men. It was it would undoubtedly cause the NOI leaders a great deal of concern and might even shake the foundation of the organization. It would cause the leaders to feel less secure when the membership has some knowledge of the economic benefits the leaders receive in forms of automobiles, homes. So they're going to say that they're uh, they're going to. I think this might be it actually. So the date is unable to make a uh, penetration into. The, so the NYO. So I don't know. That might be um, the spy agency. I'm not sure. Right. Um, has been unable to make a penetration to the top leadership of the NOI in New York so far as the informant development is concerned. Some penetration of the top leadership might occur when their economic security is jeopardized. When funds and salaries are diminished and the NOI itself is threatened, efforts must be made to shake the confidence of the membership and their leaders. The information that the ample NOI funds are available to the leaders of the NOI must be made known to individual NOI members. And look at that. So they're saying, look, so I don't know what NYO is. Uh, so I don't know what NYO is, so I can't say definitively. But but what I can say definitively is this. The FBI is saying, hey, if we could get their economic security jeopardized, right, 
we can infiltrate them. You hear what I'm saying? If we could get the 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 uh, the the economic security jeopardized, we can infiltrate them. And this this is this is general. This is actually general policy. This is this is a matter of fact. If you were interested in a woman, right, and she's with another man, you get that man's um, economic <laughs> security jeopardized, and you can get that woman. I'm telling you what it is. I, I've been on both sides. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like, you know what I'm saying? I've been on both sides. But all right, let me see. Real Black Gentleman says, Sup, Oni and Bakari. Peace to Real Black Gentleman. RBG in the building. You already know. Um, but Bakari says, If reparations were given, there would be stipulations. I see why there was so much crime in the NOI. Yeah. Uh, Bit of Medicine came through. Bit of Medicine says, Peace to everyone. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, that's what I'm saying. Reparations with no stipulations. Like, we want, we, want, we want free money with no stipulations. And it's like, people do that, but they don't do that a lot. You know what I mean? Like, like you see a bum on the street, you know, you might have, I don't, it don't matter how much money you have in the bank. If you're dropping a, 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 a G on them, right, you probably at least taking a fucking video. You know what I mean? <laughs> you're not just, like, if, you, if you're just dropping a G on them, okay, fine. You probably got it like that. But most of us, we like, okay, you know, here's a, here's a, here's a 15 cents. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, EL says New York office, yeah. Oh, EL, you should have never admitted to that, man. <laughs> <laughs> I would have never admitted. I'd have been like, nope, I don't know. You know, shit. I don't know nothing about the FBI's, uh, you know, codes. <laughs> I'll just mess with you. I'll just mess with you. I know. I, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. NYO. So they said in New York office. <laughs> nah, you're good, y'all. Don't worry about it. Um, uh, so yeah, yeah. So he's saying the New York office. Thanks. Appreciation. Uh, has been able to, so that's good about New York. So that's what Malcolm X is. And Malcolm X is like, hey, no, no, no. You smelling funny. So I, I like that. But he's like, look. Economic separate security, and that's what I'm saying. See the problem with Adam, the issue with oh my gosh, that's what I'm saying. Malcolm X was such a good man. He was such a good man, and that's why it disappoints me that 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 the nation of Islam is still in high esteem because of how they did this man dirty. Because just imagine, there's so much money moving into the NOI, and you know who's benefiting? Elijah Muhammad. From Malcolm X's efforts. And Malcolm X dies poor. Can't feed his kids. Type poor. No houses. No housing. Nothing for himself. And 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 and, and, and meanwhile his quote unquote mentor is, is banging secretaries and living in a mansion. At his old age. At his big age. You know, they said they said that the reason why Malcolm X and Elijah Muhammad were, were, were at it. And this is not me. It's not me saying it. It's not me making it up. This is uh, um, Dr. Ben Yakinen. He said the reason why is because originally Malcolm X brought a nice light, a nice bright girl, light, light-skinned girl, um, to Elijah Muhammad. Elijah Muhammad said, yeah, she's all right, after he slept with her. <laughs> and then Malcolm X went and got him a dog. You know, a dog, nice, you know, nice dog sister, you know, Betty Shabbat. But, but, but... You know, like what kind of fuck shit? You know, like this, this it was a sex cult with a bunch of money coming in, and it was partly, be, and it was mostly because of Malcolm X. You got to realize, remember that organization was around from 1930 to 19. So Malcolm X then joins in 1950, and there's a big explosion in population, in popularity, big explosion, right? And it's because of Malcolm X, but he dies poor, and Elijah Muhammad has the fucking estate. And I mean, that's, that's not unusual. You know, if you work for somebody, that's what happens. You know, if you work for somebody, that's what happens. You know, like, I, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not capping you guys. I'm saying, like, for real, if, if somebody said, hey, you know, Oni, I really like what you're doing, right, and it works for me, you know damn well I'm going to get the babes. You know what I'm saying? You're working for me. What you expect? I'm not saying don't work for me. I'm just telling you what the IS is. You know, like, <laughs> I mean, I might be a little more child. I might give you, give you, give you, you know, give you your good share. Obviously, I'm not gonna do like Malcolm X and make nobody have be, be broke. Not under my watch, no. You know what I'm saying? Obviously not. Cause, cause my, but, but that's why I, I don't even tell people come work with me. I tell you guys, hey, look, get your shit together. If you're gonna work with somebody, make sure you working. Make sure it's 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 good on your half too, on your behalf too. You understand? I mean, obviously, I make sure people under me will be doing fine, but. 
But 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 real talk. That's what it is. Because I, I tell you, I, I, we were on the Discord. Somebody linked me this thing about um, the guy who makes uh, Fruit Ninja, the developer of Fruit Ninja. He's like, I ain't get rich. People are like, damn, that was the biggest fucking app on the. You know, that was they're pulling in like they say it was like ten thousand dollars a day or some shit at some point, right? They're pulling in money, and he's like, ah, nah, I, I could put out, I could buy a house. You know what I'm saying? All right, I could put a down payment on the house because he was working for somebody else. And it's like, I, I, there's nothing wrong with working for somebody else. There's nothing wrong with that. But but you gotta also understand your worth you got to understand this other person's motivation why you work for somebody else you know what i'm saying or at least you got to be able to feed yourself well i don't know i mean it's, it's complicated i mean because like i said i'm about to build this restaurant so it's complicated so we, we'll see exactly after i uh <laughs> uh we, we'll see after uh, after after i have to pay these uh these these, these restaurant tours you know i mean obviously i'm gonna pay better than other people but still, we have to see. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> I also want to, you know, keep the restaurant up. So, you know, since I just Googled it, yeah, I feel you. Uh, Ripley Gentleman says, it's kind of like that Willie Lynch letter. Even if it's fake, the intent is put forward. Yeah, shake him out. Uh, Ripley says, shake my head. Yeah, I, I put down, I wrote down who actually wrote the Willie Lynch letter. Uh, it was his brother. He wrote another book. But he wrote it, but he based it off of Black Jacobins. So he read Black Jacobins and he was like, damn, that's what they used to do to us? Okay, well, I'm going to write a book. I'm going to write a book and make it, you know, sensationalized so that I can communicate what really happened. You know what I mean? So I can communicate what really happened so that people can, um, you know, people can, people can, you know, people can, like, feel something, you know? So it's fake, obviously, but it's based off of reality. It's, it's, it's a nice piece of fiction. So he says, look. Um, so, because the interesting thing is that they're going to say they're going to make a large comic book. So, he says, the information and ample NOI funds available to the leaders of the NOI must be made known to the individual NOI members. In order to make this information known to the members, the, the New York office has appeared the following. A large comic book type publication made up to ridicule the leaders. This is how, this is how, they, this is how they like, this is how, they, this is how you know the white boy knows you. And this is, this is why you have to learn. Like, you have to learn what the white boy thinks about you. So you know how to reach your own people too, because the white boys. This is not. This is not. You know. You know. This is not. This is not. You know. Like summer school or something. This is. This is the premier American intelligence agency. Okay. This is the premier American intelligence agency telling you, hey, you know what? Would be a good way to reach these black folk. A large comic book. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Wakanda, you know? All right. A large comic book type publication made up to ridicule the leaders. The book depicts blah, 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 you know, the different people giving the good, blah, 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 having good homes, you know, showing that they have a good life, um, having good homes, big cars, and wearing fine suits. It is felt that this type of publication would be an effective method of securing initial interest and would appeal to a wide and generally uneducated audience. And what's interesting is this, too. This is Instagram. And and, and, and and we could actually, um, we actually like this stuff. I, in fact, I, I'm kind of guilty of putting a few of these videos on, uh, on, on for, for Shoot the Breeze. I don't know if it's going to play, but uh, a few of them, like, where they're just showing you black wealth, black rich people. We like that shit. Now, this this was, he, he they did this to, you know, because it was in light of the religious, you know, where he says the publication would be mailed. And this is why, this is another thing that I, I, I tell you guys about, about this white boy. Why? Why I don't really mess with America? I just, I just heard, matter of fact, this uh, brother Baruti um, video, and he's just talking about sovereignty. And at some point, he, while he's talking about sovereignty, he's like, "I might not even say this because somebody could just knock on my door later on if they say it." And I'm just like, "What kind of sovereignty talk is that?" Because he's like, "Yo, you got absolute control." But like, nothing against him. But here's, here's another thing about it. You don't own the post office. You know, and the reality is this: you're not gonna have any sort of sovereignty where you own the the mailing system, the delivery system. Uh, you can go under people's noses, technically. You know, you could deliver things on their own. But here's the issue: this white boy does own the postal service. 
So he says, look, publications will be mailed in unmarked envelopes. Because, see, you can't even do unmarked envelopes. <laughs> you can't even do it. You try to send an unmarked envelope, right? And and it's just not going anywhere. <laughs> but this white boy could because he owns the fucking system. So he says, look, we'll be mailing unmarked envelopes purchased locally and will be sent to 36 members of the NOI who are on the security index of the New York office. It would also be mailed to... And look, they got a security index of 36 people. Only mailed to a selected number of 237 other individuals in the New York City area whose names have appeared on membership records of the NOI. They got your membership records. These letters, individuals reported... Uh, individuals reportedly joined the organization in 1963 and 1964, and all probability many of them are still members or have close friends in the organization. When the membership receives the publication, it can reasonably be assumed that it will cause some of them to start thinking and begin asking questions concerning the leadership. They may become disenchanted in the organization, cause others to be disillusioned. Perhaps future membership might also be reduced. This is why it was active. It's also noted that, um, so let's see if there's anything here. Oh, okay, let's see. It's also noted that the leading NOI, NOI officials in New York area, when the publication is disseminated, the membership, it could cause these above three individuals. So he says, these are the leading, there's three leading individuals. It could cause these individuals to feel that their literature was made up by other NOI leaders in the New York area who desired to get rid of theirs, three individuals, and take over the NOI in New York for themselves. In other words, it is hoped that the dissemination of this publication will result in internal strife, distrust, and disorder within the NOI itself. Therefore, the Bureau Authority is requested to place the above-described counterintelligence device into effect. If approved, the Bureau is requesting to have made up the Bureau 273 comic book type publications which can be anonymously mailed to the membership. The actual size of the publication is being left to the discretion of the Bureau. The New York office will ensure that the steps will be taken to the mailing cannot be traced as originating from the FBI. Look at that. They can make untraceable mail because they own the mailing system. You see what I'm saying? They can make untraceable mail because they own the mailing system. But this is the country you're in. The Bureau will be advised of any tangible results which might re occur from the actions and recommendations forewarned. It's like, it's like, it's like, like, how, like, and no, no disrespect to, you know, the brother who talked about sovereignty. But it's like, what kind of sovereignty can you achieve, right, if you rely on this other man to give you mail? Or you rely on this other man to give you internet? And he's, and, and, and it's not so much, oh, you rely on another man, because that's fine. You know what I mean? Like, anywhere you go on the planet, you go rely on other people. The man's actively hostile to you. You know what I'm saying? He's not your friend. He's your, he's, he's your fucking enemy. He sees you as a fucking enemy. And, 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 and you're like, hey, man, could you, you know, so I'm going to send a letter to... Yeah. <laughs> you might have been my, uh, you know, like, I, I, I know people in... Uh, in the in the in the, uh, in the in the in the in the in the big house, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I guess that's that's what they call prison, right? I know people there. They like, hey, can you send me a picture of my uh, of, of 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 your child? And I'm just like, no. <laughs> like 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 you know damn well they reading every damn thing that you put through. I ain't telling you shit, man. What the fuck is wrong with you? And plus you go on you and like I know this motherfucker can't keep nothing, right? So then you gonna have some prisoner. Yeah, I don't know who this motherfucker is with a picture of my damn chick, kid. You know? What's interesting is this same uh, this same person told me, hey, you know, there's people in prison who have your name and your address and all that shit. And I'm like, how do they get that? And he's like, uh... I'm telling you, man, like, 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 like and, but the thing is, it's like, they don't, like, if you look at this document, you see that they have the name and address of every motherfucker here. And I'm not saying that you wouldn't have the same situation in Africa. The thing is this, you don't have to be, uh, 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 you don't have to be uh, antagonistic to the African government that you live in. You don't. Uh, but imagine says, that comic book plan got me when I first read that, shaking my head. Yup. Um, but it, Real Black Gentleman says, we don't ridicule their leaders hard enough. Lampoon, berate, and harang. Look at that, man. Uh, what's this blank ass page? You talking about, you talking about the NOI leaders or the, or the, or the white boys leaders? Uh, so he says, look, uh, blah, 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 public instruction, blah, blah, blah. So we're almost up to page 67. I kind of didn't want to read it right away because I feel like that's the meat and potatoes. Um, but I mean, it's also whatever. I mean, because one, one of the parts you're probably going to see. At, oh, actually, it's right here. Look at that. Stokely Carmichael. <laughs> Residence, 1810 Amethyst Street, Bronx, New York. 
Employment. Oh, okay. He works at SNCC headquarters. Right? And then they're going to also say H. Rap Brown, I think, a little later. Yeah. H. Rap Brown. So they redacted numbers two and three, because I got two and five, because they're not historical figures. Residing at 530 Manhattan Avenue, New York City, with an individual named William Hall. That's William Hall's phone number. Like, it's, it's, it's almost ridiculous. Uh, it's almost ridiculous how much, how, much, how much access these white boys had. So look at this. Requested authority to make anonymous and pretext telephone calls to 11 militant black nationalists for the purpose of disruption, misdirection, and neutralization. In order to approve this recommendation, the Bureau needs to know what specific purpose those calls will have and how the calls will accomplish this purpose. For example, do you plan calls to the leaders of one militant group telling him another group is trying to steal his followers? The Bureau will be pleased to consider your recommendations in detail for disrupting these black nationalist leaders. This, this is, this, this is, this is, and, this, and look, this is not even, this is not even like conspiracy theory. This is not, um, this is not, oh, well, you know, this is just a document. You don't know if it's real or nothing. This is the FBI putting out this motherfucking document. Like, I downloaded this from the FBI motherfucking I. Like, you go to the FBI's website. I used to say I wasn't going to go onto that website. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you this. When I tried to open this on a computer, they were like, uh, this might be a malicious thing, you know? <laughs> shit. <laughs> Fuck it. Who gives a shit, right? Because, again, like I said, I'm not even, like, you know, I'm not, I'm not even, you know. Uh, but anyway, but so I'm not going to recommend you guys try to open it. Either way, um, what I'm going to say is this, that, uh, yeah, this, this is, uh, like, like, they're saying, look, we want to disrupt these white nationalist leaders. Mail, Relat merely requested authority to make these anonymous calls without specifying the nature of the calls or the objective sought. Um, so Relat is probably one of their agents. I don't know why they, they didn't redact it, but it is what it is. Since Columbia was added to the officials attending, blah, 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 um, counterintelligence, counterexpelled, blah, 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 right? So it's not really that important. Uh, so this is, this is page 67, or page 66. So this is the part where they talk about the whole thing. I kind of did want to skip ahead, but it's not even that important. Um, there's not really much else. And besides, I could probably, like, field questions or, or whatever afterward. Um, EL says, with impunity, it's a fishbowl, right? A fishbowl. What, red light is a fishbowl? So, all right, so look here. So... We have this, 1968, right? I guess Malcolm X was already killed. So he says, look, the purpose. Th 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 this, is not, this is not me. It's not me, okay? This is, not, this is, this is the FBI saying, look, we, ha we have a purpose right now. To expand the counterintelligence program, that's COINTELPRO, designed to neutralize militant black nationalist groups from 23 to 41 field divisions so as to cover the great majority of black nationalist activity in this country. All right? That's it. Background. By letter dated August 25th, 1967, 23 field offices, 23 field offices. These white boys were way more organized. Okay? 23 field officers, offices were advised of a new counterintelligence program designed to neutralize militant black nationalists and prevent violence on their part. The real thing was just they didn't want you to be violent. They don't care if you're fucking making money. They don't care. They don't care if you're broke. They don't care. They don't care if you and your, your, your woman are fighting. I know you guys are like, man, they trying to destroy your family. Yeah, sure, but they don't really fucking care. What they care is that you ain't trying to destroy their family. Okay? Prevent violence on their part. Go to this program are to prevent the coalition of militant black nationalist groups, prevent the rise of a leader who might unify and electrify these violence-prone elements, prevent these militants from gaining respectability, and prevent the growth of these groups among America's youth. All right? So the current development. In view of the tremendous increase in black nationalist activity and the approach of summer, this program should be expanded and these goals should be reiterated to the field. Attached Airtel also instructs the field to submit periodic progress letters to stimulate thinking in this area. What I like about this right here, the approach of summer, right? If you read, uh, that, that's, that noise is, why nobody joining my motherfucking um, live? Oh, okay, never mind. It's actually somebody joining. <laughs> hey, Brother McGuire, what's going on? What's going on, man? What's going on? Can you hear me? Uh, barely. What's on? Like, can you say it again? Now, can you hear me? Yeah, 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 I can hear you, man. Oh, look, you know what? He was going through those files and you 
talk about. There's a whole lot of here I can talk about. Uh, he was talking about the FBI following those people, right? Keeping tabs. Yeah, you know, you, 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 you know what's crazy, man? Growing up in a house with somebody who the government is following. So growing up in a house with somebody? Wait, what? Growing up in a house with someone that the government is following. Shit. The government is keeping tabs on. You know, look, this this happens today. Like, this happens today. Like, I know somebody who's, like, yeah, like, their every move is being watched um, because they they did some, uh, you know, quasi, like, they, they, they encouraged some sort of militancy, you know, and now they're, like, on a fucking list, you know? Um, yeah, yeah, the government is is it, it, it's it's not a joke but at the same time it's like what do you expect you know, you know they come to funerals to make sure people are dead trust me I everything at my, at my dad's funeral, man. they come to the funeral to make sure you're dead you know what there's this there's this pro yo there's this oh my gosh there's this bbc film not film um series it's called, I think it's Undercover or something. Really effing good. Like, it's it's about uh, black American militants type thing. Um, but it's a drama. It's really good. But they had that kind of scene in it where the guy, uh, like one of the one of the agents um, was like really serious about this whole uh, uh, thing. But it, I mean, obviously it's a BBC thing. So it was, a, it was in that. Like it was, it was, it was good for, like it's good for like if you, if you want a date night, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but it is what it is. Let me say this though. See the summer thing. The thing I want to say about summer was this, right? In the book, the Spook Who Sat by the Door, he, uh, the author says um, that every summer there's this big protest around a black youth being killed. And why I found that so interesting is because he wrote he wrote this in nineteen whatever. You know what I'm saying? And Every freaking year before that, every year after that, there's a big, highly publicized police killing of a black youth. Every year. And, and here the FBI is even writing down the approach of summer. We got to turn up our, our, our we got to turn up our, our, our ability to capture the militants. You know? Uh, yep, and that's, that's, that's part of the way because they know the militants are gonna come out. Exactly, and that's that's what you know. I remember I used to, you know, like I said, I used to, you know, go to this organization and all that, and they would say the head Negro in charge was Al Sharpton, right? Um, in the sense of I mean, this is about back in the day, right? Al Sharpton would show up at these sort of you know turnups, right, and tell everybody, no, 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 no. You know, go do channel it else, channel it elsewhere. You know, channel it into voting. You know, channel it into you know poetry. You know, <laughs> you know, channel it into demanding jobs, but do not channel it into 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 violence, right? And you know, we know that's 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 the like we know that's the case when we have the NOI, or not the NOI, the 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 BLM when we have that kind of thing. But even like, but today it's like you almost don't even need it. Today you got so many black men uh, who are answering to she, her. You know, you got so many that it's like it's like it's like you almost don't even have to worry about it. I mean, obviously they didn't stop; they're not going to stop. These white boys are going to be on top of us, no homo, right? But <laughs> but like, yeah, it's it's bad. It's bad. I don't know. You have anything else to say before I, I, I continue? You know, and that's what they, and you know, I'm going to tell you something. And, and in all honesty, they're doing their job. We're not doing ours, right? Now, when you was talking about the NOI and the money they was getting, I put in that chat. Uh, no no wonder there was so much crime, crime in the NOI, right? right? Had so many criminals, right? 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 Man. Now, when you was going through that, each member had to give $12 a week, right? So they would go, then they, they had to buy the newspaper. Think about this is 60, $12 a week was a whole lot for black folks. Shaking my damn money. head. Think about it, man. So then they had to do, sell all those newspapers and keep $6 a week for themselves, right? Now, 500 people 
uh, and how much money they was getting. They was getting a hundred and some thousand dollars a month, right, man? And I ain't saying this to just make up that. I, I can tell you somebody you can listen to. Uh, all that money wasn't coming from selling of newspapers. <laughs> it was not coming from the selling of the, uh, of that call and bean pies and all that. Trust me. Man, Malcolm was telling the truth when he said what they said. You know, then they had the little steak and take restaurants. But, hey, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I'm, I'm not... In that sense, I guess I'm not trying to knock, but they 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 were doing other stuff. Like, have you ever heard of Philly's Philly's Philly, Philly's Black Mafia from the seventies, sixties, seventies, eighties? You ever heard of them? Well, I'm not sure if I heard of the Black Mafia from Philly. Nah, yeah, they were they were called Philly's Black Mafia. Yeah, they were N O I. <laughs> yeah, Philly's Black Mafia was N O I. And if you you can get a chance, you can just look at it and see. All right, let's see if it comes back. Let's just see if it comes back. Um, all right, cool. All right, let's see if it comes back. That shit. That was a long ass uh, shit. <laughs> Whoa, it was long. All right, uh. So we're back from that intermission. <laughs> Absolutely planned. We're gonna try to get the uh, um, the chat back. Uh, the chat back. But let me see. Uh, yeah, we're gonna try to get the reading material back up. In the meantime, in between time, uh, let me remind you guys I'm part of Podcast Network. Although <laughs> a little bit embarrassing. I don't know if people at home would have caught a whole. Like a whole gap, or if it would just have skipped ahead because there was no data coming through. Um, well, let me see if I could. All right, let me just. I don't even know what's opening. So we got the YouTube, we got this going on. We just got things opening up. Uh, yeah, it's the right document. Open it up at least. Um, I don't know what page I was on, but we're just gonna skip. Oh, we're gonna skip ahead to sixty-six, I guess, um, and just go from there. So this is it. All right. Um, we're, we're gonna try to open up the the chat again. Um, it's just loading really slowly. In the meantime, in between time, although I think you click the same link, um, I'm just not in it yet. So he says, look, let's get back to it. Uh, they're going to say, I'm mad that my computer got like that, though. That's really like on some broke boy stuff, you know? Uh, so he says, look, background... Field officers, America's youth, summer, attached air tell also reminds the field that counterintelligence suggestions to expose these militants or neutralize them must be improved by the Bureau, right? This attached air tell expanding this program to finding goals and instructing periodic progress letters be submitted, be sent, Albany, and other li listed field officers. Uh, that's another thing I want to remind you guys. So the link to the chat is in the dis video description. Okay, it's in the video description. This thing, this thing is not loading for me though, so I can't really uh, say one way or the other. But it's not loading for me, so it is what it is. Um, we're gonna keep going because that was a long ass delay. Hopefully, you guys got some water or something. Uh, shout out to everybody who stuck around. Um, and shout out to everybody who left. You know what I mean? Like. You know, like freedom. <laughs> Title has changed to substitute racial intelligence for internal security for bureau routing purposes. So, personal attention for all the following sacks. Um, they have two. Don't know what that means, but um, two, 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 right? Um, let's go on. It says background. The letter 
dated 8 67 the following officers were advised in the beginning of the counterintelligence against militant black nationalist groups. So look at this. They're telling you where, basically they're telling you where black folk are. Where black folk could potentially be a threat. Albany, New York. Atlanta, Georgia. Baltimore. I don't know all the states, so I'm not going to hold you guys. Baltimore, Buffs, Boston, Buffalo, New York again. Charlotte, North Carolina, I believe. Chicago, Cincinnati, Cleveland, Detroit, Jackson, Mississippi, Los Angeles, Memphis, Newark, New Orleans, New York, Philadelphia, Phoenix, I guess that's Arizona, I don't know, Pittsburgh, Richmond, St. Louis, San Francisco, and Washington Phil. They're like, look, this is where we believe, like, we have people stationed out here, okay? We have people stationed out here, and and we're, uh, like, like, we're already ready for them. Um, hold on a second. So they're telling me I could join the chat now. Um, I could allow for both of these. What went wrong with this? So they're telling me, yeah, okay. So I'm in the, I'm in the chat room. Um, if anybody wants to join, I'm in the chat room. Let me see. Let me put down the meeting info again. Hopefully my computer don't fry again, but you know, it is what it is. Um, I mean, obviously we could just quit. <laughs> the computer, computer fries again. We, we should be near the end, so it's all good. Uh, let me, uh, what can I say about this uh, computer thing? Oh, yeah, I got to share the screen on the... Actually, I think I'm going to just... No, no, I think I get that. I, think, I don't know if it's going to be too many resources to share the screen. I think what happened... Like I said, I had the computer on pretty much all day. So that, Again, I, I think this white boy kind of just, you know... All right, so each of the above offices was to designate a special agent to coordinate this program. Replies to this letter indicated an interest in counterintelligence. Look at that. People were replying to this letter saying, yeah, I would like to sabotage these black folk. And here's the thing, too. It was a lot of black folk replying to these this FBI's memo. Okay, a lot of black folk already working for the FBI. And, you know, sometimes you might say, okay, well, you want to take down the communists? That makes sense. You want to take down the, the Russians and the Chinese? I, I don't agree with that, but that makes sense. But now you got enthusiastic black folks saying, yeah, 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 I can help out. I can pose as a, as a black person. I mean, I can pose as a, as a black militant. I can try to get these motherfuckers tied up. You know, or you got white folk like, yeah, I, 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 that would be a good way to use my, my, week, my weekdays. That's a pretty safe investment for my, for my day. So he says, look, Military that format um, replies to the letter indicated an interest in counterintelligence against militant black nationalist groups that foment violence and several officers outlined procedures which have been effective in the past. Look at that. Several officers outlined procedures which have been effective in the past. For example, Washington Field Office had furnished information about a new nation of Islam grade school to appropriate Authorities in the District of Columbia who investigated and determined if the school uh, uh, conformed to district regulations for private schools. In the process, WFO obtained background information on the parents of each pupil. You see that? You know, cause that, that, like, 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 it's easy. It's easy. So there's this, uh, there's this, there's this organization in New York called the Asar. It's not just in New York, but it's called the Asar. A set, you know, thing. These people were like, hey, we have a school. Like, basically, it's a bunch of polygamists. It's another one of those, you know, you know, like, and I, 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 I like I said, I, I'm warming up to poly, to plural marriages. I'm warming up to the idea. I'm warming up to the idea. I don't look at it as an African tradition. I wouldn't pose it as an African tradition. But I get it. I get it. Right? So, my, my, my encounter with them was that it's just a bunch of rich dudes getting a bunch of poor women, you know, at the same time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like that's all it is, right? Or like rich black dudes getting a bunch of, you know, poor black women, right? But it's nice because the poor black women look good, right? Um, you know what I mean? Uh, I mean, all black women look good. Poor black women, they look good, but you could have too. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like, like they're willing to share, okay? Uh, that's pretty much the mentality over there, right? You know... I, I looked at this, it's the Ra'on Nefer guy, I looked at this book, I was like, this shit don't make no damn sense, 
Um, this is not real science. Um, this is just, you know, nonsensical wordplay. Um, all the same, you know, he's selling books. He got a school. Um, so the sister says, hey, I would like, we would like you to um, teach at the school. Okay? Um, and I said, I don't have a teaching degree. Right? They said, no, no, no. They said, well, what we're going to do is, if you, in order for you to teach at the school, you're going to have to register, you know, give us, you know, give us this, you know, your government information. Give us your information. We can see your, we can research your, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, why would I hand my information over to a uh, quote unquote black, well, they weren't militant per se. Why would I hand it over to a, a black group? Because when you do that, even, even if you put your student, even if you put your kid inside of this group, you know what happens? They hand that information over to the government. I don't know what WFO means. Oh, the world, oh, sorry. Washington Field Office, right? The Washington Field Office said, we're going to have all the information on this school because you idiots fucking actually believe that you could have some sort of independence in motherfucking America. So while you might have been like, hey, look, I'm a secret person inside of this, uh, you know, I'm in this organization, but don't nobody know, right? I just show up, but it's not going to affect me in any sort of way. No, as soon as you put your damn kid inside of that school, they got all your information. You know, when, when you, were, you were putting fake names in the meeting, you know, because like sometimes I would go to places and I would put down fake names. You know, I'd be like, yo, yeah, you know, to Martin D showed up. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, Marcus G showed up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> like, obviously fake names. Right? You know, uh, uh, <laughs> uh what was I saying? I was saying, you know, Julius N showed up. You know? It's an obvious fake name. My answer to it, you know, you say, hey, Julius. I'm like, yeah, what's up, man? You know? But then if I put my kid into a school, they're like, oh, well, you got to put all your information. You got to put the social security number. You got to put this on and so forth. And guess what? We're giving it right to the NYO. Leave it right to the NYO. This is why, this is why it, like, like I said, it doesn't even make any sense for you to try to organize a black America. It doesn't even make any sense. Because you do something noble, like put your, sin, your, your child through a school. Guess what? You're now on the motherfucking list. And it's not me telling you this. It's not, oh, I got a tinfoil hat, I'm conspiracy theory, I'm just thinking. It's not me telling you this. If it was me telling you this, you could be like, oh, well, this is the F motherfucking I telling you this. Says, so, oh, yeah. Hey, 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 look, 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 look. This is not just the FBI telling you this. This is the FBI telling you this in the context of, oh, we got some effective procedures from the past. This was effective. Make those motherfuckers build a school and then get all the motherfucking fools information. It's not me. You know what I'm saying? Buana's in the building. Shout out to Buana. But but I want you somebody 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 please write to me. It's not you. Because I want people to understand that it's not me saying this. I want people to understand I'm not the one making up this is how this what what this white boy thinks is an effective tactic for, for sabotaging you. He said, Oh, we're just gonna get your fucking information through your kids. It's not, it's not me saying it. That's why I said, I don't even, I don't even, like, as soon as they told me I, I could work in this building, if I, I said, no, look, I'm not going to work for you guys then. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't need money that bad that I'm going to fucking put myself on a motherfucking list. Or look right next to you motherfuckers. You see? I don't even like you guys. No disrespect. You know what I mean? You pay me on the table like a motherfucker. I don't give a shit if you pay me less. You pay me on the motherfucking table. That's it. You know what I'm saying? You ain't getting my motherfucking home address. You ain't getting my credentials. You ain't gonna look at my motherfucking degree. I got a degree. That's all you gotta know. Revolutionary Action Movement ran a pro-Chinese communist group was actively in Philadelphia in the summer of 1967. And this is the government saying, not me. The Philadelphia office alerted local police who then put RAM leaders under close scrutiny. They were arrested on every possible charge until they could no longer make bail. As a result, RAM leaders spent most of the summer in jail and no violence traceable to RAM took place. Look at that. You're like, hey, look, man, we're the Revolutionary Action Movement group. Well, <laughs> police roll up and say, hey, look, you arrested. Oh, well, pay the bill. Oh, you can't? Okay. 
And that's it. It's the end of your movement. Counterintelligence program is now being expanded to include 41 offices. Look at that. They, they said we got 23 cities to look at these Negroes. We're going to make it 41 just to look at these Negroes even more. These offices added to this program should designate the agent familiar with black nationalist activity and interested in counter interested in counterintelligence. Not, oh, well, you know, you know, research. Like, inter interested to coordinate the program. This agent will be responsible for the periodic progress letters being requested, but each agent working this type of case should participate in the formulation of counterintelligence operations. So you got black people, um, you got white handlers, black, whatever. Uh, Barna says you belong in a classroom, bro. I don't know what that's trying to say, man. Now, like I said, you can't you can't do classroom. You can't do you do you do a classroom, right? This white boy got you. He got you. See, right now the white boy don't got me. I'm not saying the white boy don't got me. I'm not saying he don't don't don't. But he don't got me like how he would if I if he if I did something like that. If I went around like for instance, let's say let's say it's easy 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 easy. Right? That's what I'm saying. Like, this is why, this is why I, I, I don't tell people this, but I say this. I mean, I, somebody can say this. They can say it would be really motherfucking easy to destroy, sabotage a black movement. Because y'all got no motherfucking security sense. You know? And it's like, good. You know, not everybody should be paranoid. That's fine. But, like I said, I, I don't, I'm not even a resident. Like, motherfucking ADOS done told me, you ain't even, you ain't even one of us. So, and I appreciate them for that. I appreciate them for that. You know? That just means that, you know, if, if somebody is, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, like when somebody's getting harassed by somebody else and they, and they already told you, hey, you're not, you, 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 ain't, you ain't one of us. Like, that's good. I mean, I don't got to fucking fight. You see what I'm saying? And I, I like that. I like, because I, I want to go to Africa. Like I already said, I got some, some bad sisters waiting for me in Africa. You know? And I didn't just say sister. I said sisters. Waiting for me in Africa. So they said, uh, um, they say ain't nobody showed up to my, my, they said nobody showed up to my chat. So, um, so they, uh, so they think. But like, but like, that's, that's what I, I want y'all to understand. You know, I got bad sisters waiting for me. So I don't, I shouldn't jeopardize that so I can sit around in the prison and, 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 and play hide my butthole. <laughs> you know what I'm I ain't trying to play that game. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I live that life. I already hide it all the time. I ain't, trying to play, I ain't trying to make a game of it. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to play hide my dick in a, in a, in a, in a pom pom. You understand? Know Some motherfucker made fun of me for saying pom pom. He's like, it's probably a new term for vagina. I never heard of it. Like, what are you talking about? I'm Jamaican, man. <laughs> Wait, anyway, but, uh, but like, yeah, I'm trying to play hide the dick. That's what I'm trying to do. Or, or, or hide the millions. You know, hide the wealth. You know, I'm trying to say, you know, you know, hide the mansion. I'm trying to do that kind of shit. You know, hide it in the mansion. I'm trying to do that. I'm not trying to, oh, I'm going to teach some motherfuckers who going to be spying on me. <laughs> who going to give all my information. You know, so here's what, here's what you can do. You can sabotage a motherfucker easy. You can just, you can just offer them a good teaching career. You know, good teaching job. Right? And have the next motherfucker come in and talk about, we need to go kill these motherfucking crackers. You know how this other motherfucker say that. Right? All of a sudden... You on the list. You investigated. You going to fucking jail. You know? Y'all saw what happened to that sister. Her name is, uh, I think it's Sek, Ra, I, Sek, Met, something like that. Some sister. She was talking all that bullshit. Talking all that, oh, you know, we got to fucking kill these motherfuckers. Kill them, blah, blah, blah. She started crying in prison. And she started crying in the court. I didn't mean any of that stuff I said. It's just YouTube. Motherfuckers, do not. Do not think this white boy does not take his ass serious. Don't think he takes this his nation building seriously just because you don't. Don't think he doesn't take his nation building seriously just because you don't. I take my nation building serious. That's why I'm not in the motherfucking classroom. I tell motherfuckers, you, oh, you like what I said? Go fucking buy a book. Oh, you want you want your kid to hear what I said? Go buy your kid a book. That's it. You want me to explain it to you? I explained it to you in the book. Go read the damn book. You want me to go into your classroom so you can go and, and frame me? You know, so you you can have me speaking right after the H. Rap Brown. A. <laughs> Rap Brown the second. I'm going to speak right after H. Rap Brown the second. And he's going to be like, yeah, but you know, he's going to ask me a question right there. What about we going to kill you, bro? Like, what? Shut the fuck up, man. I'm trying to leave the country. Like, Shut the fuck up. I'm trying. I gotta apply for a passport. You understand? I gotta go to the government and say, "Hey, can I get a passport? Can I go to another country?" 
And he, he got he got to say yes or no. So I'm not doing nothing to piss this motherfucker off. You know what I'm saying? I I got I ain't got nothing to gain here. I'll tell y'all. I'll tell y'all, man. I'm, shit, I'll tell you this. Baddies in, in Africa. I, I, I know a little bit of distraction. I want y'all to get this in, 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 in your mind, though. I'm talking to this sister. Matter of fact, I, so I, I go out, I think it was two weeks ago. I, I go out, I talk to these sisters. I ain't got nothing else to say to them. I, I get their phone numbers. I ain't got nothing else to say to them. So now, two weeks later, I don't hear from them. Obviously, why should I? I ain't got, I, we ain't got no dialogue. They don't want to write me. I don't want to write them. Or even check this out. There was another sister. I, I met her on a dating app. She didn't talk about some black, you know, conscious stuff. So I was, you know, vibing with her. All of a sudden, but she she's very unresponsive. You know? Like the sisters in America, uh, the sisters in Africa, be like, they be writing, like if you don't write them for three days, they write you, hey, what's up? You, you're quiet. You know? This woman ghosts me for two damn weeks. Ghosts me for two damn weeks. And then she writes me uh, later on. Uh, Well, let me see, let me see. She writes me later on. Let me see what I'm trying to pick it up. It's been enough time to tell, and I'd like to give you those answers. And I'd like you to be aware I am interested in you. I'm just getting through a lot alone, and I wish... Shut the fuck up. You waited two damn fucking weeks to write me? Shut the fuck up. I moved on. Like, I moved on. Like, I, I'm not even into the... Like, let me explain to y'all this, man. You... I really... I, I agree with this, brother. I, I shouldn't say this, but I agree with his brother. Uh, his brother, Pan African Strike Back. He, he had this podcast where he was like, he was going in on his other brother for no. Like I, I ain't really. A, I mean, I don't know. It was, it was, I, I'm, I'm conflicted. But regardless, he going in. He's like, you should have a family. And you know, sometimes some brothers be on my ass. They be like, yo, why are you not married? Why you ain't got no family like that? And it's like they right. A brother like you, you as a whether you're a brother or sister, you should be having a family. You should have a family. Okay? You should have a family. You should be serious about having a family. You know, having these children, having a thing. You gotta be serious. And what I'm saying to you is this. I don't see myself having no damn family in America. So I, I cannot waste my damn energy. If I'm gonna be in a classroom, it's gonna be in Africa. Period. I'm not trying to fight this white boy on his land. That don't make no damn sense. It don't make no sense for a black American to do it, but it makes much less sense for a motherfucking Jamaican. You know, and you and and, and, and you can tell the FBA that. You know, when they say, hey man, these Jamaicans they trying to like I, I was down with y'all for the for the longest, but you know, after you told me to hold my own nuts, I was like, you know what, you're right. I'ma hold my own damn nuts and I'm gonna go to Africa. You told me to hold my nuts and go to Africa. That's what the fuck I'm doing. That's it. That's what I'm doing. Let me see what this is. Uh, uh, let's see. He says, here you go with the bragging. Buana says, I'm bragging. I'm, I'm, what am I bragging about? <laughs> uh, Real Bad General says, stationary education becomes troublesome. Yeah. Well, I don't know what you mean, but yeah, for sure. <laughs> Buana says, good night to the brothers, by the way. Koku, RBG, the rest. Uh, Britta says, good night. Ronnie's here. Ronnie says, I need to say any resources on how to understand African spirituality. This is the one area I'm confused on. I don't like supernatural BS, but from what I understand, our ancestors were non-supernatural. A lot of it's supernatural BS. A lot of it's supernatural BS. So there's not there's not really much to, like, like I said, what I think, like my next book is going to be about good behavior. What we have to focus on is good behavior. What, what, do you, what do you focus on African spirituality for? Like, I, 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 I don't understand that part. Like, as long as you're not religious, right, and you have good behavior. Because, I, I, again, like I said, when I was reading the, the, the religious text, you know, it's a little bit of a tangent, but when I was reading the religious text, this guy Jesus says the Gentiles already understand to treat their enemies like enemies. And I'm just here to tell them, don't treat your enemies like enemies. Treat them like friends. So he said, "Look, you already understand how to behave. They just fuck. They just they just messed up our behavior. That's it. So so this whole like you know African spirituality. Like I said, my understanding is that it's a lot of physiology. It's a lot of uh, it's a lot of scientific um, um, discussion. But I would say, like you said, any resources. I would say pick up this book right here, African philosophy." The Pharaonic period. Pick up that book. Okay? Read that book. And that's pretty much it. I, I wouldn't even 
I wouldn't go any other. I wouldn't go any further. I would just say read that, and and maybe put out tap, and that's it. Um, obviously, in in the beginning of my uh, my uh, my book of power, you have Taharka, a real prayer by a, by an African ancestor. So that was that was that was. That was intense, but but beyond that, like I said, just read the Fala Bengals book, and that's it. I would I wouldn't even like like it's really about good behavior. That's what we really need to focus on. Um, when I said between people talking about spirituality, spirits, rituals, sacrifices, etc., I'm just confused and don't know where to begin. Many of my favorite authors talk about spirit. Yeah, uh, what did I, what was it? Doctor Doctor Ben says it. And in fact, it's in the yeah, he's one of those one of those speeches and. I put some of it inside the Book of Power. But it's like, realistically, what we did was we celebrated our ancestors. So I can tell you this. As somebody who's, like, anybody whose mother died, if your mother dies, you're going to see her in a dream. Okay? And it's going to be a really realistic, vivid dream. And you dialoguing with her. Okay? And it's realistic. And she might be a little bit older or something. It's, it's weird, but that's an experience, and like you're experiencing this, and um, other people experience the same stuff, and so we don't understand dreams, we don't understand it, but what we feel like is there is something there. So humans probably once upon a time connected around that that feeling of my ancestors are still here, right, or my ancestors. You know, I have these noble ancestors. Then the world of the dreams and all that kind of stuff. It's not like, but I said, I don't think it's that deep. I don't think it's that deep. I I think you, your brain is a complicated uh, uh, device in a sense, not device, but it's a complicated uh, organ, let's say, and and we're not going to understand it. Um, regardless, a lot of a lot of it is going to be bullshit. A lot of spirituality, a lot of spiritual systems are going to be bullshit based off of the real phenomena of us experiencing really inexplicable things like deja vu or, 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 or like I said, you feeling like your ancestors visit you. You know? You see, Barna says, I see my pops in my dreams. You know what I mean? Like, like, that's, like, like, like a lot of us can't explain this kind of stuff. And of course, we could just dismiss it, but not every person, not every population, just dismisses it. And so that's that's probably the origin of spirituality, where you know, because because Buana, a modern human being, okay, modern human being with all the technological devices around him, experiences this out of this world, out of body experience, and he can discuss it and dialogue about it. And here's the thing. We might dismiss it today, but say you go back 10,000 years ago without all this technology and somebody has this sort of experience, this sort of dream, and they dialogue about it and the dialogue doesn't stop there like it would today. And then eventually something comes about from it. But remember, the spiritual systems, the spirituality, that's what I was telling this woman today, matter of fact. I said, you know, our ancestors, they created these systems. These quote unquote prophets and and all that kind of stuff. They even among the Muslims, like like I, t- I was telling her, I was saying, look, among the Muslims, this, this gentleman named well, not gentleman, but this guy named Muhammad said, how can I get these Arabs to be a, a powerful people? And eventually, they are spreading out around the globe. They conquer North Africa. They conquer Southern Europe. They conquer much of Asia. They conquer. Uh, they, they have empires in, in, in Western Africa. They do all this based off of this guy, Elijah Muhammad, saying, hey, look, this is the real, like, this is how we advance ourselves. This is how we, we change our, 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 be, our behavior. We change our behavior. We start eating halal. We, we, we have our women dressed up modestly. We, 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 we encourage our men to marry multiple women after they've accomplished wealth. We, 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 we change our behavior and we are able and we, and we practice warfare. We, we are able to conquer much of Africa, much of Asia, even Europe. Even Europe. Rome. Right? They, they, 
they 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 do all this, and so uh uh like 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 that's what we have to do as African people. That's what that's where the spirituality that's where the spiritual systems come from. Oren Miller was just a man, just like you or me. Muhammad was just a man. Jesus was just a man. Uh, Ma, uh, Moses was just a man. I don't even know if Jesus was a real person, but but if he were, just a man. And they and they had these these ideas and these beliefs about how to advance their people, how to advance their cult, how to advance their their, their how to change human behavior. And that's all it is. That's all. The, that's the core of these religions, the core of these spiritualities, and even the core of my next book, obviously. Just the changing of our behavior for the benefit of our people. That's it. You know? So he says, so I feel this is an area I'm missing out on. Rudy supposedly making a book called Higher Ground. It does a spirituality, which is important because I love him, but I have no idea what he is talking about when he mentioned spirit. Yeah, spirit is not, like, spirit is not, that nobody knows what it's, like, nobody knows about that stuff. Nobody knows about that stuff. Once upon a time, you just worshipped your ancestors. Eventually, those ancestors became esteemed ancestors or group ancestors. But nobody, like, I don't, like, I, 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 nobody, like, nobody knows about that stuff. I mean, if, if somebody knows about that stuff, then I'm in the same boat as you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know about it. I can say that. I don't know about it. Marimba Ani talks about it, sure. Aye Kwai Arama talks about it, yeah. They talk about it. Um, Haitian Revolution, talk about spirituality, never read his books. Yeah, exactly. It's just, I, I know what you're saying. Like, um, people talk about it, but... It's like we have to put it into context of people talk about it based off of what they heard 10,000 years ago. You know what I'm saying? Like based off of what they heard 10,000, 5,400 years ago. You know? Uh, we, we wouldn't go to, like if you go to a, a regular villager right now, and you're like, hey, I'm just going to sit at your feet because you're wise about the world, right? Um, you could do that, but you're fooling yourself. I'm not saying that they're not wise. Of course they're wise, but uh, <laughs> of course, in, in, in some ways, right? But, but you'd be fooling yourself. You know, you'd be fooling yourself. If you, if you said, hey, look, I'm just going to sit at your feet and listen, um, like you'd be fooling yourself. I mean... You know, like, what can I say? I mean, what can I say? It, it really, realistically, it's really about moderating human behavior. Um, and part of it is, um, part of the reason why you want to moderate human behavior, using, quote unquote, religion or using spirituality, using spiritual systems or using a, a divinity, is because if you don't use an outside authority, you don't have authority. You know what I'm saying? You don't have authority. So you, you, you evoke an outside authority to gain authority. You know, you leverage superstition to, to, to get something going. Like, like for instance, if we look at the Yoruba um, um, Orisha thing, they're saying, hey, um, they're saying, hey, do not steal from your neighbor. Now remember, they're all, they're all Yoruba, Right? Do not steal from somebody because even if they don't catch you, Oran Miller saw you. You know what I mean? Or Old Dumare saw you. Now look, Old Dumare is not watching you steal from this other person. But when you tell somebody, it's kind of like that whole Santa Claus thing. You know? When you tell somebody, or the elf on the shelf or whatever, when you tell somebody, hey, look, if you're bad... You're going to get cold at the end of the year. You're not going to get a gift, right? That's what the old Dumare is watching you statement is. There's nothing to un the only thing to understand about it is that it's trying to moderate human behavior without authority. You know? It's trying to get people to, to feel like, oh, yes, if, I'm, if I behave better, like if I behave good on my own, right, um... Like, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 like there's something that's going to be good from that, and yet, like, afterward. You know what I mean? There, there was this video of, 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 uh, of this guy, um, and we can't show it on the Bitter Medicine podcast, right? Um, but there's this video of this guy who has this woman, um, 
she's, the surgery's going on. She's under anesthetics, right? He's behind a curtain. Like, she's being operated on from her stomach, right? He's on the other side of the curtain, right? Because the curtain's, like, separating her upper body from her lower body. You know, so she can't see. Look, in case she wakes up, she can't see her body being operated on or something, right? So the guy's on the other side, and he has his penis in her mouth. He has his penis in her mouth while she's under anesthetics. So they have him on camera, and it's like, he's doing something we consider wrong. We consider it wrong, right? But if there's no divinity, right, who says it's wrong? Now, obviously, to us, it's wrong, so we don't do it. But that's we don't do it. And we might not do it because of some religious thing. We have our own moral compass, but everybody has their own moral compass. And so, so the question becomes, how can you, uh, how can you, all, like, how can you affect somebody else's moral compass? How can you make somebody else's moral compass be wrong? And the justification you can have is, well, old Dumari is watching. Old Dumari doesn't approve of you stealing. You see? That's what, that's all spirituality is. Anyway. So Barna says, Ronnie, let's master the natural world before we go to the supernatural world. I think, y'all. Um, Bobby Wright says, um, shit, Barna, I hope not. Because <laughs> look, I'll tell you, man, I already don't go to the doctor. <laughs> I already don't go to the doctor. But, you know, I damn sure ain't going to try to. And then, shit, I ain't going to the dentist either now. All right, but well, uh, Bobby Wright says, Dr. Kim Wande Kia Bunuski Fukiao teaches from Congo cosmology and spiritualism. Yeah, so does uh, and Bobby, I, I like Asaram Motep. Asaram Motep, he talks about African spirituality, Kimoyo, um, using those sources, right? Um, uh, I, yeah, so wh- the reason why, what I, why I brought him up is to say, when he says Kimoyo, he's talking about um, like a system that people use to improve their life, health, and wealth. Like, that's it. It's just, just making better choices. Ronnie says, absolutely, that's all I've ever been focused on. I was just confused with the concept of spirit, spirituality since many people talk about it. Look, uh, th- those people, most of them are Americans, right? Yeah. I remember Ani Baruti. I was talking about Baruti earlier, the sovereignty in America thing. Like, this this document is showing you what sovereignty in America looks like. Um, but, A.R. Mont, like, some people believe in this stuff, but, like, yeah, you believe in, like, I think that most of them were children's stories to moderate human behavior. You know what I'm saying? Um, because it's hard to moderate human behavior just off of the basis of, hey, you're wrong. You know? There, there's a video. I think I said, there's a video. Um, if you guys, make sure you guys join Bit of Medicine's Discord. Um, but um, there's a video there where this, this woman is walking. She's half naked. So these men decide to shout at her and say, why are you dressed like that? She's like, I can dress however I want. Right? And then so now an Arab man comes out. And they start having a conversation with the Arab man. The Arab man's like, leave the lady alone. And then they're like, would you want to hear, have you ever seen an Arab woman dressed like that? And he's like, of course not. Right? <laughs> and then they're like, well, what about if an Arab woman were dressed like that? Wouldn't you try to correct her? And he's like, no. And that's it. And, and then he's, later on he says, he says, the woman knows that she's wrong. Like he, the, the, sister, the, the black woman knows that she's wrong. But the question is this. What authority do you have Tell another person to get dressed. Like, uh, how they should dress. Like, what authority do you have to tell me that I can't walk around naked? Like, like what authority do you have to tell me that I can't walk around naked? And I remember when I was uh, younger, this white boy was, uh, I, you know, I was on this, you know, um, this internet, whatever. And this white boy was like, when he when he picks up the, uh, the, the, the paper, the newspaper, right, he picks it up, butt naked. Opens his door. He's, a, he's in a European country somewhere. Opens his door and gets the mail, and he's butt naked. He don't give a shit who sees his 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 nudity, cause he's in his house. You know what I mean? He's in his house. So, so, the reality is, who can tell this person, oh, get dressed in your house? If he's not breaking any, it's always like there's two things. One is the laws. The laws can tell him um, he can't be naked. But the other thing is, well, religion tells you God thinks you should dress this way. Religion is just that. Anyway, so let's just go back to the chat because I see uh, 
The very, the very few people are just getting fewer. So look, goals. So for go- maximum effectiveness, the counterintelligence program, and to prevent wasted effort, long-range goals are being set. One. Look at this goal right here. Number one. Prevent the coalition of militant black nationalist groups. In unity, there is strength, a truism that is no less valid for all its triteness. An effective coalition of black nationalist groups might be the first step towards a real Mau Mau in America, the beginning of a true black revolution. This is number one. So this, this is the this is not this is again this is not me. This is the white boy saying, look, these black nationalist groups can't actually perform a black revolution. This is why he don't wait. This is why he didn't leave you alone. And this is why you can't be that transparent with him. As a matter of fact, I, I, look, my thing is this. I personally, like, I'm not even, I'm not even saying it out of this. I don't want to be transparent thing. I'm, I'm being real. I, I really do want to just leave this fucking country. I don't, I don't. I'm not interested in a true black revolution, per se, right? But what I'm saying is this: if you were interested in a true black revolution, and this white boy knows that. You're a, you're a motherfucking dummy. You know, I, I tell you, I, one time I was listening to one of these lectures, and this dude was talking about how him and his, his boys would organize a fight group. You know, they would they would meet up and, and fist the cuff with each other. And and that's all they would do. They just organize. But, you know, he's talking about black national stuff. He then says he was visited by the FBI, saying, what are you organizing a fight group for? Why are, you, why are you teaching black men how to shoot? And he's like, isn't it my right? They're like, no. Stop that shit. And that's it. And this is in America. But like, but like, you have to understand that this white boy is not trying to play with his country. Yeah, these black folks that you know, they they play in black nationalism. They play in black nationalism because the thing is that if you're really serious about black nationalism, you ain't gonna be you ain't gonna be doing all this bullshit that you're doing. You know, like, like what Ronnie was just saying, a lot of those, a lot of those people you talking about, they just, oh yeah, we're going to talk about the spirits and stuff. What the fuck are you talking about spirits for? Like, what are you talking about? Like, you're not, like, like no. What are, you, what are you talking about spirits for? AL says, in unity of strength, that's close to what's on the Haitian flag. Shit. They don't want, they don't want no, they don't want no Haiti here. The, uh, yeah. Shit. Number two, prevent the rise of a Messiah who could unify and electrify the militant black nationalist movement. Look at this. Malcolm X might have been such a messiah, but we killed him. He is a martyr of the movement today. You see what I'm saying? I said there was five people that this FBI considered. And they killed three of them. Said the other one was too damn old. And they, um... Yeah, they killed three of them. Said the other one was too damn old. And they chased the other one out of America. He was a foreigner, so they chased him to Africa. That's me, foreigner chasing me to Africa. That's okay. I'm good. Thank you, Asante Sana. I think I think I think I think uh, Stockton Comichael was the most important. Uh, was was the smartest one there. Now, see, this is the problem because I told you guys it was five, but they're only going to show four. So the other one's Fred Hampton, right? But anyway, so it's just Revival of Messiah, right? So Martin Luther King Jr., uh, Stokely Carmichael, Elijah Muhammad all aspire to this position. They all aspire to this position. Elijah Muhammad is less of a threat because of his age. He's too damn old. We don't give a shit. King could be a very real contender for this position should he abandon his supposed obedience to white liberal doctrines, nonviolence, and embrace black nationalism. They're like, yo, King could be a, a real motherfucker if he just if he just stopped with this this this, this obedience to us. Like like, like 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 damn, damn son, you know. <laughs> Carmichael has the necessary charisma to be a real threat in this way. So they're like, hey, look, Kwame Ture, could I, I, when you think about it, Kwame Ture was the real deal. He was the real deal. A lot of us don't realize it, but Kwame Ture was the real deal. Elijah Muhammad was a motherfucking shit, right? Uh, he was a motherfucking, like, you know, piece of yeah, POS, all right? Uh, Martin King Jr., he was all right, but again, even the, even the government said he's soft. <laughs> They're like, ain't no way this nigga that soft. His supposed obedience is a white liberal doctor. They're like, ain't no way. Ain't no way, boy. But but even the government telling him he's soft. Shit, man. And Malcolm X was a good brother, but they, they, they shot him. They got him. Right? Fred Hampton was a good brother. I didn't even mention him now, but I thought they did before. But they shot him and got him. Okay? 
Anyway, number three, prevent violence on the part of black nationalist groups. This is of primary importance and is, of course, a goal of our investigative activity. It should also be a goal of the counterintelligence program. Through counterintelligence, it should be possible to pinpoint potential troublemakers and neutralize them before they exercise their potential for violence. You see, that's it. Like, 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 and that's what I'm saying. Like, a lot of black folk be advocating for violence on, on the internet. That's fine. Like I said, I used to be with it. I used to have this meeting, this meeting. His brother would tell me, like, he, he would show up. He looked like he was a motherfucking soldier. But he would tell me, for his posters online, they would visit him all the time. They would say, hey, man, why are you posting that shit online? And it makes sense. Because the thing is this. There's no country on this planet that wants you to be violent. That wants you to be, like, 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 because remember, the state wants to monopolize the violence. Okay? The state wants to monopolize the violence. Right? The state wants to be the arm of violence. They don't want you being violent in the state. Let alone if you're being violent to, quote, unquote, create your own nation. Like, not like, what? It's one thing if you're being violent to just, you know, get yourself some money from your own people. Sell your own people to slavery. That's one thing. It's a whole other thing if you're trying to be violent to make your own nation. That don't make no damn sense to this white boy. And you gonna let him know? Like I said, me personally, like I said, I, I gotta keep saying it because, you know, I, I'm kind of sounding like I'm sympathetic, right? But I, 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 me personally, like I said, I got I got baddies waiting for me. You see what I'm saying? I got baddies waiting for me. I, I, I got, I got, I got, shit, I sound like a motherfucker, right? <laughs> <laughs> Royalty, <laughs> but like, um, no, like, like, I, I, I gotta go get married and have a family. I ain't worried about oh, I'm gonna get a black because I was like, first off, I already know I got nothing to gain from no black nation here. I got no, I got nothing to gain from no black nation here. Nothing, and nothing, nothing against black people and running nations. I'm not saying that, that black people can't run nations because obviously I'm trying to go to a black nation, which was yeah, not really the best run nation, but still it was a pretty damn good nation to me. Right? But um, I already know y'all gonna put Tariq Nasheed and Beyonce <laughs> in the presidency. I got another game of that. Cardi B gonna be the senator or some shit. I already know that. So I, I even. Uh, you can have it. If you want that, you can have it. I don't. I don't. I, I ain't even with it. I ain't even with it. You got you got Glory. It's gonna be like Tory T. Like y'all, y'all ever heard about the uh, Nation of, not Nation of Islam? Um, Hebrew Israelites, Hebrew Israelites went over to India. No, not India, Israel. No, they African Americans went over to Israel, and they have a whole economy. Like a vegan, nice vegan, that's cool. But um, the, the the men make their money by singing, singing for the for the for the for the for the for the, uh, for the Europeans, for the Israeli singing, and, and not just that. They, they, they a lot of times what they do is they just beg Americans to. To you know, quote unquote remittance. You know they they beg their their American family members to 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 help them buy some more stuff. No economy. And I, again, that has nothing to do with and it has nothing against black people in general. But what I'm telling you is that the lack of control that we have in America at this moment as quote unquote black Americans tells me ain't no damn way. I mean, not not, not ain't no damn way. It just tells me, look. I got a better life waiting for me elsewhere. So I ain't gonna... Like, cause I already, I already made that mistake. I already made that mistake. Y a lot of y'all don't know this about me. A lot of y'all don't know this about me, but I was in grad school when I thought that we were gonna have our own black political party. And I said, look, grad school is not as important as a black political party for these African Americans. Grad school is not that important. So I was in grad school going to get my, 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 my PhD. And I said, no, fuck a PhD. You know what I mean? Let's 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 do this work for these African Americans. And then what I what I found out was besides some a lot of African Americans were like, we ain't gonna vote for no black party. We ain't gonna vote for no all black party. That's stupid. We're free. Right? That was kinda that irked me a little bit. But what really irked me was this. The president the, the gubernatorial candidate we chose, Charles Barron, was a motherfucking agent. And, we, and, and apparently, and what, what pissed me off was Alton Maddox said, oh, he knew that um, Charles Brown was bad, but he didn't know he was that bad. And my thing is like, if you knew the motherfucker was bad, why did you put him on the fucking candidacy? Why, why did you put him on the ballot? And, and that's what I'm saying. Like, the, we talk about good choices. 
the bad choices are, are so fucking prevalent here. It don't make no sense. Like, I got a good choice already. I ain't trying to fucking ruin it. I'm not trying to ruin it by, 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 by being serious where, where, where people are not serious. Being learned where people are not learned. I can't do that anymore. You know, a young man had 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 had, had, had a degree waiting for him. Had a, had a, had a, had a you know, I, I already did most of the classes type stuff. All I had to do was finish my thesis, and it was going to be one of the best motherfucking thesis out there. And I know you're thinking, oh, you're just being arrogant. No, it was about motherfucking uh, 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 how stars were formed. Nobody knows how stars are formed. I was gonna write about how stars were formed. You know, fucking. What the fuck? Oh, they had my name up there. But instead I was like, no, 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 no. Black politics. Black, I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna work for these African Americans. And it's like, oh yeah, it was sabotage from the inside. For my own leadership. And it was enough that, you know, a lot of black people on the ground weren't with it. Makes a lot of sense. Our own leadership sabotaged us. Back to back to back to back to back. It was stupid. It was stupid. It was a joke. It was like I poured my life into that. It was a joke, but that but that's that's the reality. The reality of, of the situation is this white boy has you. It was like uh, apparently the leadership cuz like we couldn't make any decisions. We were just pawns. Apparently the leadership was like 95% police type shit. You know what I'm saying? Like 95% police, but it's like, how did they all get there? And they were known traitors. They were known traitors. But it's like, yeah, that's what it is. Like, black folk in, in New York City are operating under known traitors. They, they said, the, 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 let me see if I remember the name. Reverend Daughtry, I think. He got a, he got a, he got a church uh, right by the police precinct in Atlantic Avenue. And a lot of a lot of the quote unquote black leadership of New York City go to that church, and of course that church is gonna have that African centered vibe, African theme vibe, right? But yeah, it's, it's a fucking joke, man. I'm telling you, I don't, even, I don't, you can't even like it's just a, it's just a, no, no. I I done threw away a motherfucking PhD for that, like no, you know. I would have been a damn physicist. Um, I would have had my name in textbooks, but I, I don't now. Shit. White boy textbooks too. Not that I want to be in a white boy's textbook. That, that was part of the reason why I didn't really give a shit. But like at the same time, it's like shit. Compared to being betrayed by this white boy, come on. All right, number four, prevent. And that's what I'm saying. That's why nobody could doubt me. That's why I can't. I, I can't be doubted because it's like I, I could have been enjoying a good career. Anyway, number four, prevent militant black nationalist groups and leaders from gaining respectability. By discrediting them to three separate segments of the community. The goal is discrediting black nationalists must be handled tactically in three ways. So they're going to tell you three ways. You must discredit this group and individuals to first, responsible Negro community. Look at that. Second, they must be discredited to the white community. Right? Uh, both the responsible community and the liberals who have vestiges of sympathy for militant black nationalists simply because they are Negroes. And third... These groups must be discredited in the eyes of Negro radicals, the followers of the movement. This last area requires entirely different tactics from the first two. Publicity about violent tendencies and radical statements merely enhance black nationalists to the last group. It adds respectability in a different way. So basically, if you say, if you go to the liberal and you say, hey, you know what? Like you go to the white liberal and the black respectable people and you say, you know, these people are burning the mall, right? Um, they're like, Oh fuck, yo, no, they shouldn't be burning them all. They should be doing something else, right? Um, you know, like fighting bourgeoisie or something, right? Um, whereas you go to the Negro radical and you say, hey, you know they're burning them all? They're like, yeah, man. That's why I give fucking the, the white boy got insurance. Yeah. <laughs> Shut the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, it's like, whatever. Number five. I thought they said it was ten of them, but it's, I guess it's five. A final goal should be to prevent the long-range growth of militant black nationalist organizations, especially among you. Specific tactics to prevent these groups from converting young people must be developed. Besides these five goals, counterintelligence is a valuable part of our regular investigative program, and it often produces positive information, right? 
So it said counterintelligence is a valuable part of our regular investigative program. So it's like, don't, like, make sure we get the youth. And the thing is this, the young people today, the young people today are focused on video games and being girls. You know what I'm saying? Like being girls. And I'm talking about the boys. The boys are focused on being girls. The girls are probably, I don't know if they're focused on being boys. I don't know. But I can tell you guys that I, I've, I've, I've passed by quite a handful of, of trannies uh, in my time. Uh, even just coming back to America. It's just it's just sickening. But uh, targets. Primary targets of the counterintelligence program, black nationalist hate groups, should be the most violent and radical groups and their leaders. We should emphasize those leaders and organizations that are nationwide in scope and are most capable of disrupting this country. These lead targets should include the radical and violence-prone leaders, members, and followers of SNCC, Student Nonviolent, <laughs> ironically Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, Southern Christian Leadership uh, Conference, which is um, uh, um, Dr. King's organization, Revolutionary Action Movement, I actually don't know much about them, um, RAM, and the Nation of Islam, um, so on and so forth. So offices handling these cases and those of Stokely Carmichael of SNCC, H. Rap Brown of SNCC, Elijah Muhammad of SCLC, Maxwell Stanford of RAM, don't know this guy, right? And Elijah Muhammad of NOI should be alert for counterintelligence suggestions. So I actually thought the last person was going to be uh, the other guy for the Black Panther Party, but I guess uh, Fred Hampton, but I guess not, right? I wonder, was Fred Hampton even in this? Because I don't even know if the Black Panther Party was a thing at this time. Because they didn't even mention Huey Newton or nothing. So within 30 days of the date of this letter, each office should, one, advise the Bureau of the identity of the special agent assigned to coordinate this program. Two, and so look at this. This white boy could communicate amongst themselves about the quote-unquote identity of, of special agents um, and assign them and all that kind of stuff. They have the whole thing set up. But meanwhile, we, we, we can't keep any secrets from them. Submit a very succinct summary of the black nationalist movement in the field office territory. Include name, number of members, and degree of activity of each black nationalist group. Also state your estimate of each group's propensity for violence. This is for target evaluation only, not for record purposes. Second, list rabble rouser index subjects who are militant black nationalists and any other militant black nationalist leaders who might be future targets of counterintelligence action because of their propensity for violence, including a minimum of background information on each person listed. A few descriptive sentences should suffice. So they're like, look, um, make a, let's make a list. We have a rabble rouser index. We're a rabble rouser index. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying about the whole school thing. It's like, yeah, okay, I'm going to teach a school. Like, I, I got a rabble rouser. I got a low rabble rouser index. Let's say low is good. Like, no, not, not good, but let's say low is, you ain't much of a rabble rouser, right? I got a low index. I go to your motherfucking school, right? And, and one of you got a high rabble rouser index, right? All of a sudden, I'm in the index with you. And I'm not even trying to live your life. You know what I'm saying? I'm a Garveyite. Garveyites are like, hey, you know, this is a white man's country. We, 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 ain't, mad this white, we, ain't, we ain't mad at this white boy. From, like, we just like, okay, it's your country. You fucking took it from the Native American. We get your motherfucking violent race. I just want to leave. Period. I just want to leave. You know? I mean, I, I happen to have citizenship. I happen to have whatever, but I just want to leave. Nobody wrote no comments? Number three says, list those organizations and individuals you consider of such potential danger as to be considered for current counterintelligence action. Briefly justify each target. So these people writing on you. So they're meeting you just to fucking write on you. Submit any suggestion you have for overall counterintelligence action or the administration of this program. Suggestions for action against any specific target should be submitted by separate letter. Number five, submit by separate letter suggestions for counterintelligence action against the targets previously listed as field-wide. Those should not be general, such as publicized story goes travel to communist countries, but should be specific as to target what is to be done, what contracts are to be used, and all of the information needed for the Bureau to approve a counterintelligence operation. So they're like, look, don't just say, oh, oh, you know, you guys, you know, let's talk about, no, they're like, we got people. Name names. Name the contacts. You know? Name the information. And, and that's what I'm saying. Like, that's, how, that's, why, that's, why I, that's why I could... That's why I, I want to say about... It's actually an essay in this book called When We Ruled. But 
about the level of intelligence you have to start communicating. You know? You have to communicate on a level of a very specific intelligence. But we're going to continue. Thereafter, on a 90... I'm a, I'm a low-key hungry. I ain't going to hold you. I ain't got money for computers. I ain't got money for food. Like, damn, boys. Um, <laughs> thereafter, on a 90-day basis, each office has submitted a progress letter summarizing counterintelligence operations proposed during the period operations affected and tangible results. Any changes in the overall black nationalist movement should be summarized in this letter. This should include new organizations, new leaders, and any change in data listed under number two above. Suggestions for counterintelligence operations should not be set out in this progress progress letter under the following captions. One, operations under construction. Two, operation being affected. Three, tangible results. Tangible! Tangible! Four, development of counterintelligence interests. These 90-day progress uh, statements, letters are the bureau of first day of March and so forth. Actually, I like this. I like this. I like this. I like this. Tangible. Who says tangible? What we need is tangibles. Who says that? You understand? They say, look, we either have an operation under consideration, we either have an operation being affected, or we have tangible results, and then we have development and counterintelligence interests. So what the development of counterintelligence interest. So what happens after we did the so basically we're gonna first think of an operation. We're gonna we're gonna report to you and say, hey, look, we're thinking about doing this. Then we're gonna say, hey, look, what's what we're doing? We're doing this. Then they're gonna say, hey, look, these are the results of what we're doing. And then they're gonna say, look, we got something else coming up because we did something. And this is this is this is the thing about life. That's what I was trying to I was telling this woman today, matter of fact. We can change people's lives. Us, all of us, individually. We can each change people's lives. As a group, as an organization, you could change a lot. You could get you could you could suddenly make uh, developments of counterintelligence interest. I'll be sucking my teeth though, right? Um I don't even know if that's the whole of the podcast. Let me see. Real Black Gentleman says RBG says uh, the thing is Leaving is hard when most every one of my people around me cannot, couldn't fathom why they would do the same. I don't want to go it alone is my main word. Psh, bro, 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 don't even know. I don't want to hear that. You, 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 you got to look out for you. And you got to look out for your kids. You got to look out for your wife. You got to look out for your, like, like, this is the thing like I, I was saying, because like I said about the plural marriage, you know, so I'm all about balance. I'm all about harmony. Okay. So the question becomes, why would somebody marry more than one woman? Right? Because why because a woman has no reason to marry one than one man. Right? So why would you marry more than one woman? Because you want to protect more than one woman. That's it. You know, you like Lady A and you like Lady B. Okay? You like both of them. You feel like they're both good women. But if you only choose one, if you only choose A, B is going to burn. You understand? B is not going to find a good man. She's not going to find a good man. If she could find a good man, she would have been with him. Because she's a good woman. So so you as a man, what I'm saying is because real black gentleman is a real black gentleman. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so... What, what, what I'm saying that is to say that you as a man have to say, look, I'm I gotta I gotta be protecting at least one woman. I already protected some some kids. I gotta be defending some people. You don't gotta worry about other people making other people make everybody has to make their own choices. You shouldn't slow down your choice because other people ain't making the right choice. You know what I'm saying? But that, that, my next book's about choices, about good choices. That, that's the core of African spirituality. Making good choices. So your good choice is this. You could, like, I, I don't know, I don't know your, your wealth situation, but let's say you get some wealth, right? You could get yourself a good house, a good woman. Take care of a human being. Take care of a family. And you're saying, no, I ain't gonna do all that, cause, cause my cousin, they just wanna party and bullshit. Okay. Alright, fine. So that, that good human being that you could have taken care of, they motherfucking dead. And you, that, that future that you were going to have, they ain't going to have it. 
You're going to meet some American chick and she's going to be a... Because uh, why? Because cause, cause, cause why should she be good? If you don't want to make good choices, why should she? You know, if you don't want to make good choices, why should she? I'm talking about going alone. Man, you ain't going alone, man. You're going, you're going home. You ain't going alone. You're going home. The effectiveness of the counterintelligence depends on the quality and quantity of positive information available regarding the target and on the imagination and initiative. Imagination, initiative of agents working the program. The response of the field to the counterintelligence program against the Communist Party USA indicates that a superb job can be done by the field on counterintelligence. You see what I'm saying? They said, look, after we fucked up the Communist Party, after we fucked up the Communist Party, we know this chick could, this chick could fly. I like that. I like, I like that they said that. Cause, cause it's not, it's not me. Counterintelligence operations must be approved by the bureau. Because of the nature of this program, each operation must be designed to protect the bureau's interests, so that there is no possibility of embarrassment to the bureau. Beyond this, the bureau will give every possible consideration to your proposals. All right. Because of the nature of the program, must be designed to protect. So they're like, hey, look, don't, don't, don't screw this up. And they, they have a central intelligence agency, right? Oh, this is, not, this is not the CIA, but still, they have they have an agency in order to make sure that they, they come out clean. I like that. I like that. I don't want to compliment them. I like that. That was actually the end of that um, that section. There's a few more pages. We just scroll through. And while you can, um, just, just send some questions in if you have any questions. I'm going to type that in the chat. But otherwise... Let's see. Type in chat... In chat, we wrap it up. Uh, or if somebody wants to join the conversation, you can. You can click the link. Um, let me see. Did I did I click? Did I even send the link back out? Yeah, I think I did. Yeah, I did. Or you can. What is this? Pretty much. Like? Um, so we got the link out there. So we're just gonna scroll through a little bit more. It's a few more pages. Because this book is a synopsis of Carmichael's revolutionary plans. So he says, um, caption, Stokely Carmichael uh, is miscellaneous edition, enclosing a copy of a booklet entitled In Google Stokely from In Google Stokely from Car Africa. So in Google means sibling. So sibling Stokely from Africa. So they were using the Swahili already. A returning Airtel advises whether bureau use of this booklet in the counterintelligence program would the Booklet, the book, the bureau is contemplating obtaining publicity about the booklet. So they're saying, I don't know if Stokely Carmichael published the book, but there's this book, we should look into it. There's this book called Dougal Stokely from Africa. Um, and uh, like the book is a synopsis of Carmichael's revolutionary plans. Right? But of course, he already dipped. You know? Because he, he was a smart man. He already dipped. Uh, uh, the, the chairman, Fred Hampton, uh, stuck around and, and you know, then he got on the ground. You understand? But but it took me kind of like I said, I you know, comments right said, Look, I'm out. I'm sorry. But by suggest uh, the re suggestion of a random caption counterintelligence program is disruption of hate groups. Um, um, the recent blah blah blah. We're just gonna skip through this because it's not as important. Public information available for use, uh, review, blah blah blah. We're gonna skip through. Like we're we're gonna start skipping through this stuff because it's not the meat and potatoes. We kind of passed the meat and potatoes. Uh, let me see if there's any comments. No comments. Nobody came to join the chat. Y'all don't want to talk. Nobody wants to talk with me. Um. All right. So let's see. Oh yeah, boy. Redacted stuff. They redacted the whole paper. Like, what are they trying to show? <laughs> More Nation of Islam stuff redacted. And again, it's not me. I don't keep saying that. Still, so then this is this is uh um oh yeah look at this Martin Luther King Jr. meets with um Cassius Clay Muhammad Ali. Um oh yeah King and so they're like look Elijah Muhammad uh, they're like Martin Luther King Jr. and Elijah Muhammad met up and we're gonna see if we could use this against them. Right, but they're like, oh, we can't use them as guests them because Dr. King was smooth, you know. Say so King raised the question, 
Um, let's see. Sources advise in the office that the presence of literature and photographs connected with the NOI along with King has raised the question as to where all the money is going to the connection. So, so. No, but um, they, they, they try to bring up, they're like, hey, can we can we ruin either of these guys? And basically all that they get was, uh, um, hold on a second. Um, all they get is that uh, Dr. King, uh, Dr. King, like like basically, uh, Elijah Muhammad like bad mouths Dr. King like oh, he's a little too white loving, but that's about it. Let's see. They said, of course, the publicity should not be in a Negro newspaper that might only publicize the Washington Spring Project to King's advantage. So what is this about? So it says for the information of blah blah released, Dr. King Washington Spring Project. So they're like, we're not even going to help him advertise this shit, you know? The Bureau, because of this past conflict between Martin Luther King Jr. and the NOI, Baltimore is requested to consider the possibility of alerting a newspaper source to this situation. If a newspaper publicizes the apparent alliance between King and NOI, a militant black nationalist group, it might prove embarrassing to King. Of course, the publicity, so on and so forth. Atlanta is requested to comment on this thing, you know. Basically, they're like, hey, these two guys met. Let's, let's, let's try to use a Negro, let's try to use a black newspaper to talk shit about them. You know, but let's be careful. Otherwise, um, like we might advertise his stuff. You know, they're not, they're not, they're not playing games. You know, like they're thinking about it from the different angles. Um, it is not believed that as presently constituted local NOI members have any propensity for violence. So they're talking about, let's see, in Memphis, in Memphis, they're like, hey, you know what, NOI there. Has approximately 15 members. They are not overt black nationalist attitude. Like, uh, members have been cautioned not to violate any laws and to stay away from the militant black power advocates. It is be not believed that at present, like, you see what I'm saying? Like, like this is this is, the, this is the freedom you have in this country. Where, like, they're like, hey, you know, you can't really do shit. So they got SNCC here. They say the SNCC, um, this SNCC chapter has advocated violence in various statements made by them in the past few years. So that's what they're looking at. Then they have this one, B.O.P., Book of Power. Make sure you guys get the Book of Power. I'm just watching you. This is Black Organizing Power. Oh, look, Power. <laughs> Same word. Anyway, so Book of Power. So they said Afro-American Brotherhood invaders in a Memphis located subsidiary of SNCC. It is known by an, any one of the acknowledged names, but it has been described by the acknowledged blah, blah, blah. This organization, commonly referred to as BOP, has a governing body of nine black males and one Negro female. All right, so nine Negro males and one Negro female. I know, I just automatically read black, you know. And its membership uh, of following is estimated to be between 50 and 100 people. This organization has a younger group of Negroes going under the name Invaders, which is composed of high school students and or high school dropouts or recently graduated students. The organization known as BOP is believed to have a great propensity for violence based on um, statements and actions of known leaders. Following persons listed of the Rabble Rouser Index are considered to be militant black nationalists, and so they're going to redact all the names. Well, look at that. Made numerous statements during the past year and a half indicating these, the use of violence in order to obtain Negro equality. So look at it. And that, that's, what I, that's what I like about this, though. Y'all notice that... I, mean, I don't know about y'all, but I've never heard of these people. <laughs> like, I've never heard of them. And that's, why, that's why it's like... You know, when we talk about history... Right, we're talking about you don't you don't you you really just get in his story. Hundred black people had an organization with ten leaders, one of them a motherfucking woman, right? Young people had a nickname, invaders, all that kind of stuff in Memphis, Tennessee. They're on the rabble rouser, rabble rouser index. You don't never hear nothing about them. And yet, and yet you wonder, you wonder why? You know? I feel like Jonathan said they pocket watch it so hard. Yeah, for sure. They be pocket watch it. <laughs> Following organization and individuals are believed to be a potential danger as to be considered um, for counterintelligence action. So you got SNCC. Um, then they just, they redact it. The SNCC chapter at Nashville, Tennessee distributed a pamphlet in the early part of November. Um, to foster the growth of local protest movements, they've evolved into an anti-draft, anti-Vietnam, anti-white group, and state the followers of uh, Sergeant Carmichael and H. Rap Brown. The above listed members of the SNCC chapter have all made indicating propensity for violence and all took part in the race riots 
which occurred in April 1967 at Nashville, Tennessee. Then you got the invaders. They named the people. They named the people. The above listed individuals are the self-admitted governing body of the SNCC-affiliated organization known as the Black Organizing Power, Afro-American Brotherhood, Invaders, all claim to be followers of H.R. Brown and Sophie Carmichael, and all have made statements that violence is the only answer to the Negro's problems, right? And so you see that they have their names. You see? And I'm not saying that, you know, if somebody has your name, that means you're in trouble or whatever, something's going to bad happen to you. But, um, but I'm just saying that, like, these white boys is watching. It's believed that one of the most effective counterintelligence... And, and see, and what, when I say these white boys are watching, what I mean is this. What I mean is this. Who is... Um, who is Tariq Nasheed's right-hand man? Okay? Who is um, Yvette Carnell's driver? Okay? Who is uh, Claude Anderson's uh, chef? Wait, wait, wait. The reason why I'm asking you these questions is because I'm saying you don't know. Maybe you individually do know. Good for you. But it's not it's not common knowledge. What I'm saying is that they... Like, maybe I'm left out. Maybe I'm left out. And that's fine. You can leave me out. I don't really give a fucking shit. What I'm saying is this. Imagine I'm not left out. Or there's a lot of people left out. But what these FBI are telling you is this. They don't leave none of their people out. They form an organization, and now they know everything. Or they, or they know, they know enough. They know enough. Whereas you, you just get the face. You just get Yvette Carnell. You just get Claude Anderson. You just get um 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 Treat Sheed. Some of you don't even know his name, Mar like Marcus Sanders or something like that. I don't know, but some of you don't even know his name. But, but it is what it is. It is believed that one of the most effective counterintelligence actions which can be taken against black power advocates is a continuing interview program of the known leaders and members of any black power group. There is evidence in the Memphis Division that within the past two months, interviews of leaders and members of the BOP organization have caused a disruption in the recruiting of new members and has created suspicion against those members who have not been interviewed. So they're saying, look, if you interview them, I don't know what interview means, but if you interview them... Um, like, like it sabotages them. It causes division. Causes thing. Just, just meeting them and talking with them causes division. Suggestion for counterintelligence action will be submitted by separate. Um, so that's what I'm saying. That's why you gotta shout out Carlos A. Cook. Because Carlos A. Cook says, "Look, I'm not even gonna meet them." So in view of the recent report, this this report, I can't, I can barely read it, but they're basically gonna say that they don't think black folk are gonna be violent. You know. It indicated that less than 1% of the Negro community is in favor of violence, civil disorder, to realize their goals. And more than 99% of the Negro community realize that law and order and respect of the rights of others is the only method to achieve their end results. So they're saying this was a, a paper. Uh, 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 um, so, yeah, this is, this, is, this is the reality. This is why I'm saying, like, I don't, I don't be advocating no violence when I know 99 damn percent of black folk ain't about it. 99% of black folk ain't about it. 99%? Oh, sorry, not black folk. African Americans. I'm not saying they're not black. I'm just saying that, you know, because the, the Haitians, they're about it. You talking about, oh, yeah, well, we, we brought like 50% of us all about violence. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but African Americans, no! The felt that the percentage of Negroes, so it is felt that the percentage of Negroes which advocate civil disorder would be very small, and if other posters did not believe the percentages are propagated by the bulletin, you know, and so the CIA does not think that. Like the CIA also thinks that these these Negroes ain't gonna do nothing. I mean, maybe I maybe I should read this, but I don't. I don't want. I don't like the font. I mean, obviously, it's not that important for me to read it either, because I I really we're gonna end this stream um, pretty soon. Let me see what the comments are like. Uh, members are provoked by the white man. The white man should not should be killed. So they said something about killing the white boy. Um, SNCC groups presented the greatest potential for violence as their members. And the leaders lean towards violence and achieving Negro goals. And why, while active, does not appear to be violence prone. However, the minister teaches that if um, members are provoked by the white man, the white man should be killed. So, uh, you know. Uh, and I remember Malcolm X saying that. And I was like, justice, justice defense? Um, uh, let's see. Ruby Gentleman says, When I hear or edit this song on the radio and it's blanked like three bars out, I think about the redacted paperwork like this. Centering the half fire. Yeah, right? Um, what's his face? Like, when you put a DMX song on, it's just... 
All right, let me just skip through this because you know, I see I see most people are dropping off. Um, because you know y'all got y'all got you know things to do. Uh, poor office administration. Uh, you see the word Carmichael here somewhere. Uh, you might consider whether publicity about the situation might aggravate Snick's problems. Uh, blah blah blah. Yeah, they're trying to sabotage. Um, Dr. Carmichael. I hear my son playing music for some reason. Muhammad Ali, well-known person decided upon it, blah, blah, blah. I mean, that's pretty much it, though. Like I said, the, the the documents in the description, I really just wanted to read that one part. I thought I actually thought that um, uh, that brother was in this book, but I was in this But Oh, yeah, his part about Dick Gregory, which is pretty interesting. So let me see. Um, 95. So Malcolm X was like, why are you motherfuckers listening to Dick Gregory? But at the same time, it's like, look, the, the Bureau may desire to consider instructing all officers as to identity of a top five or ten militant and dangerous black nationalists or rabble rousers. For example, Stokely Carmichael, H. Rap Brown, Dick Gregory, Floyd McKissick, and the like. And two, as if possible, or specific counterintelligence activity against them wherever they appear and where time may be of the essence. Through their particular activity may not violate a civic law, their pattern of activity evidenced by voice recordings might have future probative evidentiary value. They are undoubtedly aware of this possibility as evidence by their security precautions and, for example, in the case of Gregory, by his contract covering his speech from um, March 16, 1968 at Park College, prohibiting recording of his speech. So he was like, you guys can't record my speech, you know? Um, so that's Dick Gregory, and he's um, part of the top five militants. Now, of course, he dies pretty peacefully, no fucking revolution, um, a vegan. Um, still, um, that's it. Two racial informants. Um, look at this. You got this right here. He's like, NOI, hatred of all white as enemies, a separation of blacks from whites, a black supremacy, the destruction of America, and occasionally refers to the readiness of NOI spaceships hovering over the planet to carry out revolution. Okay? They were telling people that they had spaceships to cover to carry out the revolution. Um, let's see what else we could do before we, we dip. Um, blah, blah, blah. Been known to espouse otherwise. Like I said, make sure you guys... Like, you guys could read this. It's an interesting document. Like I, I also said I wasn't going to... I don't recommend downloading it from the FBI. I don't. I don't like going on the FBI's motherfucking page. Um, I don't recommend even downloading it from my page because it seemed like that was kind of funky, too. Uh, but it is an interesting document. Like if you have like a computer, you could throw away or some shit. And it's not that serious. I think it's. I think it's pretty safe to read anyway. Um, but let's see. What is this? In the absence of any specific recommended local intelligence target, um, here's some general ideas for Kansas. Prevent, restrict, or discredit where possible the appearance of field-wide targets locally, buy in through, so on and so forth, prepare for future contingencies, blah, 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 blah. Um, let us create some unity of opposition to militant and dangerous, you know. Look at that. Create some unity of opposition to militant and dangerous targets among prominent and favorable local Negro leaders and groups, including trustworthy liberals. Induce leaders and groups to ignore rather than feed the vain and publicity-hungry tendencies of local black nationalists, neutralize black nationalist activity with a counterproductive activity towards solution of Negro problems. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. They're like, look, first off, we could just ignore them. We don't, like, they're, they're, they're publicity-hungry. Like, like the, uh, like, like, I saw the, uh, I saw a post by the, uh, they were talking about these, uh, FBA guys. They're just attacking African. They're like, Africa is a bunch of stupid people, ignorant people. I'm like, look, don't feed them. Don't feed them. But look at this too. He says, look, you can neutralize the black naturalists by giving productive activity towards solutions of African problems. You see what I'm saying? Delicately utilize where practicable Negro church, schools and church teachers and persons influential with Negro youth, both in and out of schools, Mobilize favorable influence in all areas affecting Negro life, including programs in poverty, welfare, recreation, education, training, employment, neighborhood, home life, ghetto sources, police, uh, communities, relations, activities, storefronts and ghettos, that kind of stuff. They're like, look, man, the reason why these black nationals are so effective is because shit's kind of bad, real talk. 
So let's just make shit a little better. And the thing is this. Since 1968, 60 years later, oh, actually, matter of fact, what is it, 70 years later? Shit's a lot better. For, 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 for yeah, it's a lot better for, for black folk. You know? Uh, that said, because it's a lot better, yeah, black nationalists are on an all-time low. Uh, 30, more, 30 more pages, let's see. Um, no, my membership, Dallas, Texas had, like, their, their membership dropped by 20 people from 60 to 40. It's about 20, about 30%. Um, let's see, Muhammad's Temple, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm going to get some food. I guess. Oh, I'm not going to eat this late. I'm trying to lose weight, you already know. I've been looking like a fat ass. Um, let's see, Tuskegee, Civil Rights Investigation, Negro, specific, blah, 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 blah. We're just trying to look for something that's interesting. The call on the post. I can't remember where everything is interesting because it's a long-ass document. Um, and so much is redacted, too, so it's just like, ugh. SNCC, Parashaw Jail, they say something about jail, but it's not that interesting. Sometimes something just jumps out at you, you know? This is how you gotta be, uh... You know, the spiritual. Like, yeah, the spirit is trying to tell you something. So they got the KKK. Um, so let's see. An extensive, highly successful counterintelligence program regarding the KKK that the best disruptive tactic utilized in regard to accusations that members and leaders have been stealing money, collected, and have converted this money to their own use. It would appear that this same type of program can be utilized as far as black nationalist groups are concerned. So you can accuse people of stealing the money. This is why I'm saying, like... Like, like, and that's easy. So this is uh, like Muhammad saying that they gave him free publicity um, type shit. Uh, Chicago reviewed, blah, 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 by way of background. Oh, yeah, so the Bureau is aware of the King and, and, and they both met together. And the meeting, but like, they're like, everybody knows that they met, you know? So King suffered no adverse publicity as a result of the meeting um, with Elijah Muhammad. Elijah Muhammad just said, my reaction to this remarks publicly... Uh, no, Elijah Muhammad said, like a fucking bitch. He said, um, made remarks critical of King for being too close to whites, to the white man. And in reaction remarks publicly, King said, look, I don't give a shit. Like, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to make unity. Like, King was a good guy. I ain't gonna hold you guys. He was pretty good. Uh, oh, shit, I pressed the wrong button. Fuck, I pressed the wrong button. I pressed the end button. Sorry, well... I think that was near the end, though. Shit. Let me see if there's anything in between. Afro-American Institute, a Pittsburgh organization described as a secret... Mili oh, wow. Look at that. See, I almost skipped this. Afro-American Institute, a Pittsburgh organization is described as a secret military organization purposes to overthrow the existing social order through violence. Membership is estimated at between... How many people? 10, 12 to 20 persons, right? <laughs> You're going to overthrow the fucking government 12 people. Okay. Activities consist of meeting on an irregular basis at its headquarters with clandestine meetings also held in private residences. It has been reported that AI is a study group whose purpose is to promote the interest in black culture. However, it has also been reported that AI is a militant organization which believes in violence. It has been reported that the AI has been an affiliate of Revolutionary Action Movement, Revolutionary Nationalists. So look at that, look at that, look at that. Organizers in the Pittsburgh Organization of Negro teenage organizer is a Pittsburgh organization of Negro teenagers who stated um, purpose was to change share a concern to end the draft and all of the things that are dragging the young black that are a drag to young black people. No exact figure has been reported relative to membership, but is estimated to be in the neighborhood of 25, 75 individuals. Activities have been limited to insurance of public letters protesting ghetto conditions. And protest the solicitation of Negro girls in ghetto areas by white men. Look at that, Negro girls. They're like, oh no, these white boys are going to the ghetto to 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 to, to get with the women. This is back in uh, segregation. Back in segregation. Uh, to the organizers has recently made statements indicating desired activities for the organization was to acquire white businesses in Negro areas. Also indicated advocacy of violence regarding the propensity of violence. Of this organization, there's no present indication of such, except from the statements made by this person. There are no reported black nationalist organizations within the territory of Pittsburgh office other than ported above. So you got, so one of these groups is um, 20 people, 
other one is 75 people, or maybe the same group, I don't know, right? Um, uh, but, you know, a part of it is obviously, you know, these white boys, these white boys go in and they solicit these white, these, these black girls. They solicit these black girls. And these, these black men are like, hey, why don't you give us, why don't you give us your businesses? And why you all like, shut the fuck up. Stupid, make your own business. Sick of my damn head, man. But, like, look at this, too. That's what I like about this is this. You there trying to do everything you can to not get caught. You know? To not, you know, you there trying to do everything you can. You got only 12 people. You got only 20 people. You guys are meeting in the secret. You guys are meeting in private residences. You guys are meeting in a regular basis. You're not, you're not doing anything open or, or dishonest or whatever. And it's like I got all the tabs on you. How? I'm telling you, man. Like, How? So you got these, you got Muhammad's Temple. So I, I don't know, somehow I skipped, I pressed the wrong button. I was pressing page down before. You guys can see I'm pressing page up right now. And then um, I somehow got, you know, past whatever I was looking at. But like that, that was actually an important thing to see. So I'm not, I'm not too mad that um, things were happening. A disruptive tactic, it would appear that the Bureau might desire to contact a trusted source on um, the Nationals and so forth. Um, something about money. But I'm not, I'm not interested. Some of the SNCC leaders are stealing the money, something like that. Um, Bureau is aware that HR Brown has been incarcerated. A review of information received. Oh, you know, they were trying to send the bond money. And they're trying to see, maybe they're probably going to set up so somebody steals the money type shit. Um, it is felt King's reaction to the proposed technique will be a positive for counterintelligence purpose. King considered himself a devotee of the nonviolent um, Mahatma Gandhi. Um, so on and so forth. Uh, let's see, page 120. Where was that page that I just fucking skipped, though? But I just got lost on. So I think that... Oh, yeah, here it goes. I think this is it. Purpose of enlisting him for the slum. Baltimore suggestion. Uh, I think it might have been before this, though. But that's, that looks like it's close to what we were saw already. I don't think we're getting close to it. Um, right here, this is it. So that's it. That's pretty much it. That's the whole uh, party. Let me see if there's any comments. If there's not, obviously, we can skip. We can end it like a moment. Yeah, okay, there's no comments. All right, so Shemmy Otep family. Uh, actually, let me put on live chat, see if that works. Nope, nothing. Um, oh, okay, yeah, 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 there was. There was some comments. So, Real Bad Gentleman says, NOI... Well, there's a whole bunch of comments. Let me see if this... Did I miss anything from the beginning? Uh, I'll be putting on... Um, I'll be putting on uh, uh, top chat. So, let's see. Live chat. What did I miss before? Real Bad Gentleman says, Biden out here, first thing... Promoting transformers and shit, right? Um, to intercept letters, uh, El said to intercept letters with impunity. If someone gets access to your phone conversations and banking transactions, they basically have something someone figured out. Yup. Um, Real by gentleman says, I suspect some of the violence-prone elements were former soldiers fresh out of war that didn't want they didn't want electrified. Yeah, of course. Oh, they are just the, the, the even the gangbangers. You know, even the gangbangers. Um, like like you don't want you don't want anybody who could mobilize the gangbangers against whites you know like if you're in this country you you okay with gangbangers fighting each other you don't you don't want to fight white people um uh, uh let's see let's see so then you have me talking about how i was kicked out uh um real black gentleman let's see marcus g you belong in the classroom Bona says um uh ronnie was asking about spirituality um uh uh Bobby Wright was giving some good advice about how to how to how to get some more religious information, uh, spiritual information. Uh, thing is hard. Yeah, feel black gentleman talking about it, hard to leave. Uh, sorry. So now we got we count up to the chat. Real black gentleman says NOI ruined it for black folk. Without the NOI, black folk would have swayed in more harmony. Yeah, probably. NOI is a fish out of water in Black American history. I'm just saying. So the story behind the NOI really important is. Um, originally there was this documentary called um, The Hate That Hate Produced and it was supposed to be about Carlos Cooks but Carlos P Cooks said I ain't trying to be interviewed by no none of this cracker station stuff I'm not trying to do that shit I'm about building why don't you go inter interview those fools over there you know fake Muslims and now the rest was history it blew up the nation of Islam you know what I'm saying but like realistically um like that's what it is, like like the white boy had this big media 
and 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 you know, a black man interviewed Nation of Islam, and that was it. And it was it, and and Malcolm X made it look good. Malcolm X was sharp, so it it was what it was. Uh, but yeah, yeah, Nation of Islam was a fucking joke. It was a joke otherwise, and and everybody knew it was a joke. Carlos Cooks knew it was a joke. The only trouble is that who writes history? So we don't know about this quote unquote black organizing power. We don't know about that organization. We don't know about that Pittsburgh group, the African American Institute. We don't know about that group. We don't know about the other group because who writes the history? You know, we don't know about Carl St. Cook's um, African Pioneers Movement. We don't know about them. Right? Because we don't we don't we don't tell our own stories. We wait for this white boy to tell the story, and white boy's gonna tell his story but it is what it is i ain't really sweating it like i said my thing i'm just gonna um like I, I'm, I'm going to africa you know what i'm saying I'm, I'm, uh, that's it that's it you know i ain't trying to rock no motherfucking boat I, I i'm gonna tell this white boy hey can i can i go to africa and he's gonna tell me yes and and, and if he tells me no i'm gonna be like why you tell me no and he's like i ain't got no reason you're right and he's gonna tell me yes that's about it Anyway, that's all I got to say, though. Outside of that, appreciate everybody for coming through. Uh, let me shout out everybody. Well, I don't know if I can do everybody, but EL. Oh, EL was here from Jump. Appreciate EL. Uh, Real Black Gentleman was here. Uh, Bit of Medicine Podcast was here, of course. Brother Wakari, I can't scroll up and see Brother Wakari, but... Oh, no, he's right here, right here. So, um, I think that's actually pretty much it. Oh, yeah, no, Buana and Ronnie. Don't forget those two. Um, oh, and Bobby Wright. Don't forget that. So, yeah, aside from that, though... I appreciate you for everybody for coming through. This was a... Man, it's one fucking 30. All right. This is a nice evening. And Shan Hotep, Anku Ja, Seneb, Neb. Oh, wait. Let me tell you guys this, actually, before I go. Um, make sure you guys check out uh, Bitter Medicine Podcast tomorrow. Obviously, uh, Forecast and them. Uh, forecast and Bella Bukhari, they're going to be at some point. And Sister Cassidra is going to be Tanzan, obviously. Harsh Reality. All that kind of stuff. Um... So make sure you guys check out whoever comes on to the KWZ Radio Network. Um, I'm going to be here, obviously, on Sunday. Um, but, of course, I'm going to see if I can catch you guys. No, of course I'm going to catch you guys on Saturday. I gave up on American Women. I'm done. I don't need to. I shouldn't be begging. So, <laughs> like, I should Like, I'm a fucking, I'm a hot guy. So what the fuck am I doing? So, but beyond that, though, that's all I got to say. Thank you so much for, 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 for coming through. Shannon Hotep, Anku Ja, Seneb Neb, Amen, Ma'at, Dua, Netra.